the accent. You do. You have to say it like, I think it's John Houseman, uh, the actor used to in the commercials. Mm Mm-hmm. They have reached the NCAA tournament the old-fashioned way. <laughs> they earned it. Exactly. Right? That's you what have they had to. to do. Have to. Unreal wow. weekend. So, before we get into everything, and we have, uh, I think, a lot of fun today. Uh, Chris Carowell is going to join us, Duke assistant coach. I'll see how they regroup from not only the state loss, but the Carolina loss before that. They have some extra regrouping to do. Um, Michael O'Connell, who will never buy a drink. He should have. Like, I know he's a college kid, but I think he's old enough now. Either way, uh, he will be when he's done. Yeah. He's never going to pay for another drink in Raleigh. No ever. doubt. Ever. No doubt. What a uh, good retirement plan. Every time somebody buys you a drink, take that money, put it in a, <laughs> put it in a fund. There you go. Um. So, real quick, Saturday night, State's doing what State's doing. The Hurricanes are doing what the Hurricanes are doing. I'm like, my head is spinning. So many things going on. Literally, I want to thank NC State for screwing up the post-game podcast. (laughs) Did they? (laughs) Completely. Oh, no. Because I was just all over the place trying to get, trying to watch that. I'm trying to keep up to it, up uh, with yes. it in real time, Multitasking. and watching what the Hurricanes were doing. Which, if you're not uh, with us, um, two goals in the last basically 90 seconds exactly. to tie Toronto, then kill off a penalty in overtime, and then win it in a shootout because we all had that mm-hmm. uh, on the bingo card. While State is doing what State is, do- I don't know, un- like. All right, Wolfpack, you screwed up my podcast. Exactly. (laughs) Couldn't be happier. And actually, for the podcast, uh, yesterday, I went out and I put on uh, this T-shirt. Anybody watching us on, uh, Mm -hmm. I guess, YouTube, right? Yeah. On YouTube or on WRLSportsFan.com. This is the uh, the Valvano T-shirt that I got a bunch of years ago. Uh, Don't give up. Don't ever give up. It's the best. Uh, And I was accused of being a Wolfpack fan, of course. Oh, my gosh. Right? It's fine. Look. Give the guys some credit. I mean, even Tar Heel fans were kind of giving them kudos for what they did. Not all. Not all. No. Not all. That's why I said some. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So, no offense to the clearly uh, emotionally scarred Tar Heel fans. Right. First of all, you weren't the first team to be upset by NC State. Nope. Your friend's... Eight miles up fifteen five oh one. Felt the same thing. Wore that first. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how you don't love what NC State accomplished simply because of the odds that were stacked against them and how they p- were playing going into the ACC tournament. Yeah. So And there is a lovable nature to that team, and we all know what Kevin Keats has gone through, trying to figure this out, trying to get this team ready. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of apathy around the the team, really. The, I don't know about the program, but the team for sure over the last month and a half because they, you know, they started out 4-1 and one and then just completely went into neutral and then reverse. So there was a lot going on that, and not to mention your best player was hurt at the beginning of the tournament? Yep. It was just an incredible run. It was. And a lot of fun. So proud of uh, them. All right, let's uh, let's start this sucker. Oh, I didn't even get into the best part of how they screwed up the podcast. <laughs> so I made I made this, whatever I was trying to use an outside light, and I attached it to my computer, and apparently it made the audio cord that goes from the podcast machine to my laptop it rendered that dead. Oh, no. So I was doing the podcast on YouTube, which I do after every Hurricanes game. Canes Corner Podcast. Go to YouTube.com and search for it. We're, we're there about 40 minutes after every game. And uh, there was no audio. Oh, no. So you saw, you saw me right. talking, but you couldn't hear me talking. Oh. So I actually considered last night miming. Yes. But that's bad for the actual podcast. True. If I just mime it. True. Yeah. Thought about it. 
I thought about the whole thing, but I, I also couldn't find any of that really the face paint. white makeup. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, and I don't have that outfit. I'm kind of glad that you don't have yeah. that because that's that is, creepy. It's very that, yeah, <laughs> I that mean, one I is get, scared. I get some people like mimes, but no, thank you. <laughs> does anybody really? Like I don't a know. Mime? I just threw that out there right. in case maybe someone does. Everyone's got a relative. All it's right. like that relative. Put it on the poll. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Does anybody Does like mimes? Anyone like mimes? <laughs> or clowns? I mean, nobody likes them. Oh, why are we letting children around this? What is? I even grew up watching Bozo. I don't know how we got on this topic, but I I grew up watching that, and it's just it's just so weird. It's just it's weird. Like, Bozo on TV is different. I it think is. If you're watching the clown on television, it's yeah. a little bit. It's a little bit. There's a reason why the bulls go after the clowns at rodeos. Right. I'm sure there are other reasons, but I just had to, <laughs> I had to come up them. with something. All right, let's get right to it. Um, I told you that the ACC would be a five-bid league. Yes. Just, just <laughs> barely. Just barely. All right. Uh, but the Wolfpack are really the original Cinderella story, right? That, I mean, that's it. 83, Valvano searching, you know, searching for somebody to hug when it was all over. The run that they had to make through the ACC tournament. Now, that was a good team that had been beset by injuries during the course of the season. And when they finally got healthy, they were starting to show true colors. But still, it was a pretty improbable run. And how they did it through the NCAA tournament was even more improbable. Um, but So uh, here's a trivia question. And I'm just going to ask this. And you can put out your answers if you want. Uh, on Twitter at a gold fan uh, at uh, v uh, with <laughs> underscore uh, to the Victoria with underscores <laughs> yes. and, like every other letter. <laughs> yes, um, they're the second team ever in a major in a power conference to win five games in five days to win their conference tournament. Yeah, can you name the other team? That won five in five. Can you name the other team to do it? Uh, and then we will at some point discuss what that team accomplished next. Nice. DJ Burns, 20 points, four rebounds, seven assists. <laughs> uh, he was the uh, the M. Is it the most outstanding player or is it the MVP? I don't know. Whatever it is, he won it. He was named the best player in the tournament. DJ Horn had 29. Michael O'Connell, who will join us in just over an hour. Uh, 13 points per game, three assists per game, nine of 15 shooting from three point range. That's 60%. I would say shoot more. Right, right. Just shoot more. <laughs> yeah. uh, but look, what did we talk about the last, you know, three weeks of the regular season? Let's stop p- pretending that they're on. They're in the at large pool, right? Yeah, they could have gotten into it, but they were going to need to win all those games to get back in it. And let's start playing like a team that had more than one weapon. Mm-hmm. Right? And so what happens when all of a sudden Taylor plays well, Marcel plays well, O'Connell plays well, DJ Burns plays well, Mo Diara plays well, What? and Ben Middle, 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 Middlebrooks is contributing off the bench. Now, all of a sudden, you've got seven players who are all playing well and are contributing to the cause, and now you look like the team we thought we were going to see all year in the beginning of the year, Yeah, right? When we're like, wait a second, because I, I, I stand by this. There, to me, there's no difference, really, between where State can be and where I'll make Clemson the third best team in the league. And I know State just beat Duke and beat Carolina. But from Clemson to how far, as far down as you want to go, not a lot of difference. There was no reason why they couldn't have done this during the regular season, right? No reason at all. But sometimes it takes time. Casey Morsell, who had a great start to the tournament, and then his defense on R.J. Davis was awesome. Uh, talking about his head coach. That guy has been through so much, um, whether it be the, the, the noise and the chatter. Come on, man. That man has put this group together. He believed in it. And the fact that uh, throughout all the good times, throughout all the bad times, he stayed mellow. He tried a lot of different things. He, you know, 
And a lot of stuff, you know, sometimes it didn't work, but we got going at the right time. Everything came together at the right time, and, man, that's a good, that's a good man right there. Kevin Keats, I think, is a good coach. I've been saying this all year. I understand what the reality is. Two NCAA tournament trips in seven years is not good for your coaching longevity. And by the way, you win five games in five days. Your head coach gets a $400,000 raise, a two-year extension, a $100,000 bonus, and a $10,000 bonus on top of that. Yep. And and probably free beers, too. Uh, like, yeah, for, uh, yes. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably getting some free ones. Red, free red wine yeah. for, uh, for yes. Kevin Keats. Um, now, his team had to take advantage of it, and they did. What a tournament. Uh, what a... A uh, great opportunity that, you know, the guys in that locker room took advantage of. You know, when we when we, we got on the plane to come to D.C., we talked about winning one game at a time. And there would be a big picture, be a prize at the end of it. And you could tell our guys were getting a lot stronger every game that we played. It's weird because... You know, we the t- we're the team that played, and we were the one who played every game, but it seemed like every second half we got a little bit stronger than the other team. Um, thank God for our opportunity, believing in our faith. Um, thank all of the families. My wife is here who has supported me, Georgette, and uh, the parents of all of our players. It was, I mean, they played wonderful basketball. Really, really good basketball. So, congratulations to the Wolfpack. First time in 37 years. Well, actually, uh, we'll talk about the history of it all later on in the program. And again, Michael O'Connell will join us in a be- basically an hour. Uh, all right. What does this mean? By the way, uh, they get Texas Tech in the first round. Then they get the winner. If they beat Texas Tech, they get the winner of Kentucky versus Oakland. That's a smaller school in the Detroit area. And uh, then if they advance beyond that, maybe Marquette. In the uh, sometime in the Elite Eight, if they can get yeah. that far, um, I would not put NC State certainly winning a game. I would not put that past them. Sure. In fact, I like their chances. It's hard to put anything against past Texas them Tech. after seeing what they did. No, I legit like their chances against Texas yeah. Tech for a lot of reasons. But when you get on a roll, mm-hmm. right? These 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 has have a way. Of extending. Now, do I think they're going to go to the Final Four? No, but yeah. whatever. But I didn't think they were going to win the ACC tournament either. True. So, what do I know? All right, all right. So, what does this mean for UNC? Nothing. Still got a number one seed. Still got exactly where they. we all thought that they would end up. Uh, the number one seed in the West. Maybe it's a reset. And the truth of the matter is that their offense didn't offense very well. A lot of that is NC State, right? We have to uh, we have to admit that. But you know, normally their the the beauty in North Carolina's run has been when they can get one of Cormac Ryan or Harrison Ingram going, they become very difficult to beat. And I think that and NC State didn't wilt when Carolina came back from. Well, it was like a 10-point deficit, 11-point yeah. deficit in the first half. They didn't skip a beat. No. It, State just went, all right, let's play. And maybe North Carolina didn't handle that well. Here's Hubert Davis. No, I, I mean, we just we just couldn't guard them tonight. I mean, they shot, was it 54%, 55% from the field. That's just not going to get it done. We've, um, In regards to us, we've talked about all year that it starts with defense and rebounding and taking care of the basketball. And the first thing that I always mention is defense. And so – for us, and you know, statistically throughout the ACC, we've been number one in terms of all the metrics defensively. Um, allowing a team, any team, to shoot 55% for a game, that's just not going to work. And so it's um, you know, a credit that we stayed in the game, but we just, we just didn't, um, from a defensive standpoint, we weren't able to guard them one-on-one, whether it's on the post, uh, isolations out on the wing, didn't play the type of defense that you have to have in order to win games like this. Yeah. When your team is built on defense and it doesn't defense well, it probably will lose. <laughs> yeah, it that's will a probably problem. lose. Uh-huh. Just like I would say, you know, just looking at the bracket, if Houston doesn't defense well, mm-hmm. they're going to lose. Not great. It's, 
that's just the reality. If you are, if one of the two is your bread and butter, and you run out of bread and butter, yeah, it's probably a short run. So North Carolina needs to defend like they defended against Duke both times, and like they defended against most teams they played this year. If they do that, they will be fine. If they don't, it's going to be a struggle. Now, it won't be a struggle in round one for them, but I'll tell you, it might be a struggle in round two if you're not paying attention. I do like their draw, by the way. Um, And I, I do think that if they can get all the way to the Elite Eight, wouldn't it be interesting to see Caleb Love? And Arizona. Yeah. That would be uh, quite that enjoyable. Would be interesting. All right. Uh, Duke's loss probably cost them a seed line, but so be it. Um, you can always overcome a bad seed, even though theoretically the strength of the opponent uh, is, you know, better. You know, you're playing a better team as a 13 seed, theoretically, than you would as a 14 seed. Although I would say probably negligible. And then we would be giving the committee a little bit more credit than they deserve. I'm not saying that the committee has no clue. I'm saying it's really kind of random. I mean, when you give Gonzaga a five seed without really deserving a five seed, uh, or you give some of the teams that they seeded, you know, where they did, like, it's, uh, it really is kind of random. So I don't know that it matters in the opener. It probably matters more in the second game than it does in the first game. But again, not entirely sure. Um, But Duke's going to have to play better as a group. They're going to have to get more out of their guards. We'll talk about it with Chris Carowell in about 12 minutes. Chris Carowell, an associate head coach with the Blue Devils. Uh, The ACC ended up with five teams. Clemson drew a six seed. They'll take on New Mexico first. UVA is in the first four. Uh, Another reason to not watch that would be Virginia playing in it. Do something else. (laughs) I know you love to watch Virginia. (laughs) I think they play Tuesday. Did they play Tuesday? What is it? uh, I don't know. They play Tuesday? I think they play Tuesday. Yes. Uh, they play Tuesday in the first four. So um, you're saying people should go eat tacos no, instead of... No, <laughs> you should watch the Hurricanes and the Islanders uh, yes, on Tuesday. There we go. Uh, and by the way, Wake is in the NIT. They will host App State. And let me just say real quick, and we're going to talk about this later, is the NIT even worth playing? Good now, question. Now, if you're asking me, the answer is, yeah, we should play it. It should be, it should be a thing that, okay, we didn't get into the NCAA tournament, but we still get to play. We still get to play basketball. Yes, it should be worth playing. But apparently, it was beneath Pitt, Oklahoma, St. John's. Hey, I was critical of North Carolina last year for saying, nah, right. we're not interested. I just don't understand the mindset of not wanting to play, to not wanting to coach, to yeah. n- for not wanting to practice. Now... The transfer portal opened yesterday, I guess, which is a different set of problems. Yes. So, but I'm sorry, staffs are big enough. We can do both. Sure. We can multitask. Oh, I'm sorry. We're men. Men are incapable of multitasking. Ask my wife. All right. Move. Or you? look at your, I was just thinking of your podcast where you're talking and people can see you but can't hear you. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't say she was wrong. <laughs> I didn't say she was wrong. Uh, all right, we'll talk more about the NIT uh, a little bit later on. All right, real uh, real quick. And there's football stuff to talk about, too, with Pittsburgh apparently uh, getting all the quarterbacks. Right. Wow. All of them. Russell Wilson, you're the starter. Justin Fields, you're yeah. the devel- developmental guy. Bears got nothing for so. De- I'm sorry. They got Bears a si- be Bears. What do you mean? They got a six round pick. <laughs> I know. They are winning. Yeah. They got a six round pick for Justin Fields. You know what that means? The Jets will have to give up a sixth round pick for somebody to take Zach Wilson. Wow. Uh, that's where we're at. You or take Zach at. Wilson, and we'll give you a sixth, and you give us. I don't know, a box of honey bunches of oats. Big as a pie. Yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Big, yeah, no, I think that's better. Big as a pie. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Hurricanes. Good weekend in Canada. Started Ooh. in Toronto with a 
Uh, how many mistakes can we make that lead to Toronto goals? It was 4-2. It was 4-2 late. And then it was the Hurricanes winning in a shootout. Right. So, Sebastian Ajo with two goals late. The first was a pass from Dmitry Orloff, which was an elite pass on a power play. Carolina out there six on four with Orloff as the second defenseman. Uh, a Just a tremendous pass that actually Jake Gensel gets a stick on, and Ajo is still able to redirect it behind uh, Ilya Samsonov for 4-3. And then with 10 seconds left, uh, Brent Burns shot not on goal, but toward goal, was deflected in by Ajo, one of the elite tips you'll see. And all of a sudden, it's overtime. They survive overtime and another penalty. A penalty kill goes four for four against the Leafs. Then they win it in a shootout on a Jake Gensel goal. And by the way, Gensel made the shootout look easy. He like, did. Why doesn't everybody do that? What was that? It was beautiful. He comes down the left side. He fakes a shot. Did a little Sam, psych out. Sam Sonoff kind of... <laughs> He kind of flinches at it, and then he moves it across, and Sam Sonoff has to open up, and he just slid it. Yeah. I mean, it was just like the, I just, know. here, go in. Like, and that was that, and yep. it was a celebration. It's amazing. So, I mean, it was really stealing two points, but we'll take it. Then they go to Ottawa, and I didn't think Carolina was awesome. I thought it was an even game with Ottawa through two periods. And then when Seth Jarvis scored right at the end of the second period, uh, it it it. Just put their nose in front, but it's still an even game. They get the first goal, and then it was over. Done. And then it was like you could see Ottawa just go on. Melting. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and Can we just go boom, home? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Four goal third period. Tremendous. Um, good for Carolina. Freddie Anderson had to be uh, had to be really good in the first two periods to not give up more than two goals. And he was. Uh, but Carolina's now won three in a row. And they go to New York to play the Islanders on Tuesday. Yeah. That would be tomorrow. And we'll see if they can get a little uh, get a little, you know, streak going here. Hopefully. Right? That would be nice. Uh, maybe put a little pressure on the Rangers if winning the division matters. I'm not sure winning the division matters, but um Yevgeny Kuznetsov, second straight game with two uh, with a, a goal and an assist. Mm-hmm. And how about was it goal and an assist? Yeah, goal and assist. No, I don't know what he had last. I don't remember anymore. Uh, but <laughs> so Jake, <many. laughs> Jake Gensel scores his first goal. He did. After winning the game in the shootout the night before. And he actually got credit for it in, like, real time. In real time. This yes. one counts. <laughs> Although, as I asked Trip Tracy yesterday, uh, I mean, it, it should have the same effect, getting the shootout winner. And here's Rod Brindamore on the new guys. Well, I think it's, it's more probably crucial for them. You know, to fit, to feel like okay, I, you know, we all know they're good players, but they want to contribute, and that's that's what they've done. Just stepping in the lineup, and uh, Kuzi got another goal tonight, and you know, against getting a nice one there. So, and then last night, you know, it, it, that's the way you you fit in, and that's the way you uh, you know feel good about coming to a new team. They look like they belong. <laughs> yeah, um, they fit right in. I love this. Kuznetsov being here with one of his best friends in Orloff, I think matters to both. Yeah, Gensel does look like. Well, I think Jake Gensel would fit any with any team. Yes, he is that type of player. But you can tell the elite brain that he's got. Very, very, I mean, two amazing additions so to this pleased. team. It is going to be a fun Makes spring. up for last year when they should have done something. At least in my book, anyway. Uh, I love this. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Somebody asked, as we break, somebody asked uh, me on Twitter, and I think that somebody else was added. I think Trip was also added. Are these the two best deadline additions since 2006? When the team added Wait, Doug Wait, and Mark Recchi. And, well, the Wait edition happened in January. Recchi happened in March after the Olympics, after Eric Cole was injured. Uh, so that was, they probably wouldn't have added Recchi at that point if Cole was still healthy, but maybe they would have. I don't know. Um, but the answer is. Yeah, they haven't added anybody like that ever since then. Mm-mm. So, yes, they are the two best additions <laughs> yeah. since then because they're the only additions right. of that caliber since then. But, again, Kuznetsov and Gensel make them great. Yes. So, with that said, 
Let's take a break. Chris Carrowell from Duke will join us on the other side. We'll find out how Duke prepares now after back-to-back losses. Next. Going beyond the box scores. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Bring on the madness. There's the heart of the pack's done it. NC State is the 2024 ACC Men's Basketball Champion. 84-76 the final here in Washington, D.C. And the pack is going to the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row. And they've done it the old-fashioned way. They have earned it. College basketball tournament action on 99.9 The Fan is powered by Carolina Ale House, Fairway Green, and Bailey's Fine Jewelry. What an intense weekend of college basketball tournament craziness, especially if you put some wagers on them, and we are just getting started. Hey, it's Victoria Vodnecker here for BetMGM, and this weekend was a perfect example of how the underdog can help you cash in big and in multiple ways. Whether it's through same-game parlays, straight bets, live bets, or another route, BetMGM definitely gave you multiple ways to add a little extra spice to the court. But it's not over yet, even though the weekend is and there's plenty of opportunities to use basketball, hockey, golf, and more. I mean, BetMGM had me betting on golf this weekend, which I have never done in my life, but I couldn't pass up the promotions they offered. Whatever your favorite sport is, the king of sportsbook has got you covered. See BetMGM.com for terms, 21 plus only, North Carolina only. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Imagine pulling up to PNC Arena on your very own Hurricanes Harley-Davidson motorcycle. That dream can become a reality. The Law Tigers, Tobacco Road Harley-Davidson, Shiny Side Paint, and your Carolina Hurricanes are teaming up to give the Ultimate Caniac a custom Hurricanes 2023 Harley-Davidson soft tail. The bike will be given away live on the ice at the game on April 5th, and you might just win it. Go to KaniaxBike.com. That's KaniaxBike.com for your chance to win this custom-painted beauty of a bike. Do it now. Enter today. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. NextGuard Plus, a Foxhole Honor Moxie Dectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious, beef-flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about NextGuard Plus Chews. Everybody has goals in life. This is Adam Gold, and here's mine to make your life just a little bit easier. If you are a contact lens or glasses wearer, I'm going to help you out. Dr. Lori Travers and Travers LASIK, the only LASIK specialist in the triangle and the best way to make your life easier. 919-510-6830. Also, TraversLASIK.com. Let's get rid of the time, the hassle, the potential issues, allergies, dust, etc., that come along with wearing contact, not to mention getting rid of the cause. Dr. Lori brought me back to 2020 vision in about 10 minutes. It was totally painless. I was back to work the next day, and I just wake up and I go. Travers LASIK. Set it up at TraversLASIK.com or call 919-510-6830 for Travers LASIK, and you'll see how much easier your life is. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you go to TraversLASIK.com right now, you can save $1,000 on LASIK this spring simply because you know me. TraversLASIK.com, save $1,000. is not that great? This is Adam Gold. <laughs> what type of soup is Jason Kelsey? Uh, he would be like a like a chicken and dumplings. Oh, chicken and dumplings. Yeah. Very nice. Maybe like uh, an Italian wedding soup. What kind of soup would Travis Kelsey be? Travis, I feel like he'd be like a tomato bisque. <laughs> the Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold. Victoria producing the program. NCAA tournament starts tomorrow. First four games 
Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, tournament proper begins on Thursday. Uh, the Duke Blue Devils will get into action at 7-10 on Friday against Vermont. Chris Carowell is an associate head coach with the Blue Devils, and my friend joins us here on the Adam Gold Show. Uh, what's uh, what's the What was the mood coming out of Washington, D.C.? Two losses in a row, uh, knowing that John, keeps ta- John Shire keeps talking about we can control these things. Uh, so talk to me about where this team is right now. Um, <laughs> it's a good question, A.G. <laughs> mood, mood coming out of D.C. was not good. Um, and I think, you know, the state ended up winning it. Congratulations to them. They did a heck of a job. And uh, we talked to our guys about getting to the rhythm of the tournament, of the ACC tournament. State had already played two games. Right. And um, – and we knew it was going to be a tough game, uh, and uh, they just outplayed us, and really out they just outworked us, and uh, it, was, it was disappointing because you're coming off a loss against Carolina at home, and then now you got a chance to kind of all right, new season, fresh new start, and we didn't come out and play the way that we wanted to play, so uh, I guys felt that, I, I guys felt that, and. You know, they uh, we we actually practiced on Saturday, had a, a really good practice, and I think uh, I think we're in a good space right now. But you never know, you never know until you play again, and we won't play again until Friday. Chris Carwell is joining us here, assistant coach for the Duke Blue Devils. Um, that and that's the thing. I know Jeremy talked about it after. I think uh, Kyle Filipowski talked about it after. Uh, now it's it. Now the next game could be your last. And there is a uh, there is a reality that sets in for guys like that. You went through that. It's not that long ago. I watched you uh, play, you know, you know, in many NCAA tournaments, and you know that that every game can be your next game. Uh, can you? I mean, can you flip the switch and get into that mode? Yeah, I think it, you have no choice, really, Adam. Ag, you have no choice. I mean. And, um, you know, back then it was different because you had guys that had played in the tournament two, three years. You know, by my senior mm-hmm. year, I had played in three tournaments. It's not the same anymore. So, you know, a lot of these guys, it's still, it's, I mean, it would be their first tournament, first time playing in a tournament. So it's different. Uh, everybody's watching. You know, you get the ACC tournament and all these different conference tournaments where you kind of get the region watching. But when you get to the NCAA tournament, I'm telling you, man, everybody and their grandma. <laughs> they they tune into the tournament, so it's a different type of pressure, and so we want our guys to to be excited as well. It is pressure, but you you know it's a look, man, it's an honor and a privilege to to make it to the tournament, to even be playing in the tournament. So yeah, there's pressure, but also you should have a certain level of excitement. Where look, man, like hey, man, you, you have be serious but have fun because. You've been doing this all year long. Now the world gets the opportunity to see you play, and that's and that should be exciting. It's hard. It, it's hard to 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 loosen up and have fun, right? I think when you pl- when you're having fun, you're probably playing your best basketball. Um, I mean, a guy like Jeremy Roach, he looked really down. I know they were trying to, you know, like it's not a big deal. This the next tournament is the one we want. I get all of that. Uh, you know, we can uh, use the term self-medication. You're convincing yourself that it wasn't a big deal. But it was obviously a big deal because he talked about having a players-only meeting uh, when uh, when the whole thing, when they, everybody got back to campus. Uh, how can Jeremy loosen up? Because he didn't look himself in either of the last two games. Yeah, well, what happens, A.G., is you know, as seniors, you know, you get to the end and, uh, you know, it really hits home. You know, this could be my last time playing. Um, and in the AC, and, and so you kind of, you know, well, it didn't happen to me. But, <laughs> but you know, but I, I know a lot of, you know, guys that I play with, They, you know, they you start thinking about whether it's right or wrong, you start thinking about, man, what what's next? And, right. like, man, what if this doesn't, you know, you start thinking about those things. And for, I'm not saying Jeremy has, has done that, but he's been a rock for us all year long. Yeah. and. He's really underrated to me in, in in the country and in our conference, and he had an underrated great season. And so, just doing doing the things that you've been doing all year, 
and now, like, he's, he's the one guy on our team that, that's played in the Final Four. Yep. He's been in more big moments than anybody on our team, and we just need him to be him. And the, the best way to do that is just go out there and, and, and let loose and have fun with it. Because if you put too much pressure on yourself and start to thinking, thinking about, you know, what's, what's going on next, be in the moment, be present, and then let, his game is good enough and let it speak for itself. You know, I go back two years ago with as much star power as was on that team, it was really Jeremy making all these little plays, big shots that got you guys to a final four. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was the reason why we made it. He was the reason why we made it because we made the switch. I don't know if you remember, AG, Mm -hmm. Trevor Kills was starting at the the point guard spot. And uh, Coach K made the switch right before the tournament. And, uh, you know, the game against Michigan State and the game against Texas Texas Tech, we don't win those games with all his big plays down the stretch. Whether it was making the pass, the play, or we was scoring the ball, he had that he had that swag and confidence. And that's who he's been throughout most of his career. Hadn't played that way the last couple games. You know, senior night is an emotional emotional night, and you're playing against it's a lot on the line. We're playing Carolina, and then the ACC tournament, being back home. Um, yeah. but all that's over now. You know, yeah, it's all it's over now. Like. You know how how you want to be remembered, and you want to go out and whether you, whether you play well or not, right? Ag, whether yep. you play well or shoot the ball well, you want to leave it all out on the floor. Chris Carroll is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show for a guy like Jared McCain, who I've I've watched all year long and have been uh, impressed that his game doesn't seem to change. He treats the uh, every possession, every game the same way. I think he plays the right way. Uh, maybe he didn't shoot the ball as well the last couple, uh, but he looks like he was made for this as well. Absolutely. He's been the guy, when you talk about having a, a competitive spirit, he's the one guy on our team, man. Every day in practice, you know, drills, you know, uh, whatever he's doing, he's competitive, but he has a certain type of spirit, man, that you love being around. And like you said, AG, whether he's scoring the ball well like he did against Florida State when he put on a, a show, a ball show, <laughs> yeah. or, or when he when he's not shooting the ball or scoring it well, you still feel his presence. And so, you know, I know in, in recruitment, I mean, I, one of the reasons why he came to Duke was to be on the stage. And we all, we all know that this is the biggest stage that's coming up. And so hopefully for him, he won't be scared, I tell you that. Right. He'll be ready to play, and whether he plays well or not, he'll be ready to play and, and give it his all. And he's been helping in other ways. I know his defense has gotten a lot better from uh, the beginning of the season to now. When beginning of the year, I think a lot of people thought he was a liability. Uh, how has he become a better defender? Just working at it. All, all freshmen have to learn how to defend. I mean, you playing against Jared. He came in, you know, he's 19 years old. You playing against grown men, 22, 23. You know, R.J. Davis is a, is a I mean, these guys are really good and old. Yeah. And so you, you got to learn how to play defense in college. It's not high school. High school, you can get away with being the best player. You can coach sometimes. But in college, I mean, especially in our league and the competition we're playing, you have to really learn how to play defense. And, that's, and just the development. And he's evolved on that end. He's put in the work. And we drill it every day, and then you just get comfortable with the schemes and, you know, like you learn how to cut off angles, the positioning, and he's done a, he's done a really good job. And I think the most underrated part of his game is his rebounding. Yeah. I mean, man, for a, he, he's rebounded the heck out of the ball. I mean, he's had multiple games of 10-plus rebounds at his size. It just shows how competitive he is. Chris Carwell is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. Just a couple of things before I let you go. Uh, first, uh, any uh, prognosis on getting Caleb Foster back? Not, not, not right now. I have anything for you, AJ. I, I wish I could say, man, maybe. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I have nothing. You know, last time I seen him, he was rolling around on a scooter. Uh, he's doing his rehab, but I don't have like a current right. update where I could say yeah or nay. Uh, whether he's a player or not, I, I wish he. If I, if, hey, for me, we would love to have him back. You just don't right now. You just don't know. Yeah, he's got like old man YMCA game, man. I love 
He's just got a um, a knack about being, you know, finding the little pockets uh, to get shots off. I love his game. Uh, and did the ACC, I'm not saying that Pitt and Wake should have been in, because if you give the committee a chance, the uh, you know, you're basically leaving it up to them. I loved Pitt's team. I loved Wake's team. Uh, over the course of the season. They're both, in terms of personnel, they are both more than capable of not only making the field but winning games when they get in it. But the narrative of the ACC, obviously it's different from when you played. We have a lot more teams. The coaching is not quite the same because we don't have, you know, the the star-level coaches that, you know, how many Hall of Famers have we had? Um, Do you think the ACC was just basically – uh, trashed over the year, and that maybe wore you know wore off on people. Yeah, I think I think over the last few years we've been trashed, and uh, and so which I look, it's still pound for pound, the ACC still reigns supreme. And so you think about the last couple of years, uh, uh, AG. Right. Last year we had Miami, who was a five seed by the way, make it to the Final Four. Right, the two mm-hmm. years prior, we had us in Carolina, and Miami made it to the Elite Eight, two teams in the Final Four. So then you think about what three of the last eight, nine championships, <laughs> national yeah. championships, right, been all from ACC. You think about the countless number of pros, and so for some reason, and it could be a lack of, I wouldn't, I mean, you know, you you lose these Hall of Fame coaches, that that does have an impact, but for Pitt. Not to make it to the uh, to the tournament is crazy. If you look at the net net ranking, is is forty, mm-hmm. and which it make it make sense. No, it can't. You know, it, you, you just you, I just they come up with all these analytics and numbers and like I I just don't I just don't I don't get it because if you're going to use those numbers, then if you use the numbers, Pitt should be in the, in, the, in the tournament. And Wake has a, a strong case as well. And uh, I just, you know, the ACC for me, and I, of course you're biased, but the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding, man, from year in, year out. Now, I'm not saying every year, but, like, most of the time, we're right there. We're right there. Yeah, and they, they used everything against the league this year uh, without reminding us that Miami, Duke, Carolina, like all these te- teams that made the Final Four, and they said, well, they're, uh, they're not seated very high, and yet they keep winning. That must tell us something. <laughs> it must. It yeah. must tell us that. I mean, look. It's uh, you know, basketball is kind of a crapshoot when you get to the tournament. Uh, you can do everything right. Sometimes the ball doesn't go in. Sometimes somebody just gets white hot, and you can't do anything about it. Uh, but uh, I don't. Know, safety in numbers. I think there's. there's I mean, a... it's, it's crazy, man. Like if you look at Wake Forest and you look at Pitt, just uh, the look test for me. Those teams they play with, and they're NCAA tournament teams, and. For us to not to get those two teams in, man, I just don't understand. I, I, I just don't, I, I really understand. And you can make the case for Indiana State and a couple other teams yep. across the country. But for in our league, in our league, come on, man. Come I'm on. with you. I'm with you. Chris Carwell, I can't wait to watch you guys start on Friday. Uh, good luck. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Best to everybody over there. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me, AG. Take you, care, buddy. You got it. Chris Carwell. Uh, we have um, – we, we, we've talked about, like, favorite athletes to talk to in locker rooms. I've said this before. That guy is the best ever that I have talked to in a locker room. Yeah. I'm, I've talked to a lot of guys. I loved a ton of guys from Carolina. Sean May, one of the greatest ever to talk with after a game. I mean, incredibly smart funny, all of that. Yeah, he's real. You can tell he's genuine. Chris is a guy who would actually answer your question. There's no coach speak. I mean, looks you in the eye, talks to you. Uh, I could not have more respect for anybody than I do for Chris Carrawell. All right, when we come back, it's one-timers, top of the hour, how to save the NIT. Is it even worth saving? Because the answer could be, uh, might not be worth saving. And the answer to the trivia question, the last team to win five in a row, five in five days, in a power conference in college basketball. Who is it, and what did they do next? Next. 
Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. ACT Construction Equipment is proud to be your certified local Takeuchi dealer in Charlotte, Winston-Salem, Asheville, Wilmington, and Myrtle Beach. Takeuchi has long been a world leader in the compact construction industry. Let ACT Construction Equipment help you find the right machine for the job. Our full line of excavators, track loaders, and attachments are designed for low maintenance and high productivity. Stop in today for a demo or visit us online at actce.com. ACT Construction Equipment, your authorized Takeuchi dealer. During this sports season, the Governor's Highway Safety Program would like to remind you to buckle your seatbelt when traveling to and from athletic events. Whether you are driving out of or across town, wearing a seatbelt is your best defense against injury or death in a crash. Start the season off right, prioritize your safety, and buckle up. Every seat, every time. Remember, click it or ticket. It's the law. This message is brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and the Governor's Highway Safety Program. NC Medicaid is for more people like me. Adults who don't have children. People who serve. People who do the heavy lifting. Child care teachers. Full health care coverage at low or no cost. Doctor's visits, emergency rooms, and prescriptions. So if you applied before and didn't get it, apply again. NC Medicaid covers more people than ever before. NC Medicaid is for more people. See if you qualify at medicaid.nc.gov. This year, more than 600,000 people are eligible for coverage under the new Medicaid expansion program passed by the North Carolina State Legislature. This means that more people than ever before qualify for services. Brian Floyd is the chief operating officer of ECU Health and discusses these issues on this month's Conversations on Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association. Rural communities are affected even more because people who don't have insurance will seek out care in the emergency department. We really want people to get Medicaid expansion, get to see a primary care doctor, and avoid the use of an emergency department that consumes those resources that might really be needed for true emergencies. You can listen to the rest of this discussion on Conversations on the State of Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Learn more about Medicaid expansion and other important healthcare issues at nchealthcare.org. That's nchealthcare.org. Need money for college? Well, if you're a North Carolinian from a household making $80,000 or less, the next NC scholarship could pay for more than half, if not all of your tuition and fees at any NC community college or public university. And it doesn't have to be repaid. We're talking at least $3,000 for community college or $5,000 for a public university and possibly more. Get all the details about the new Next NC Scholarship and see how simple it is to apply at nextncscholarship.org. From the mountains to the coast, there is tremendous pride in North Carolina agriculture. NC Forever Farms is a program recognizing family farms that are protecting precious working lands vital to the future of agriculture. Through permanent agricultural conservation easements, these NC Forever Farms will always be protected from development. Learn more about preserving family farms through the Farmland Preservation Division of the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services by visiting ncadfp.org. If you pay your city or town for electricity, you live in a public power community. Public power communities provide electricity to families and businesses from a locally owned and operated system. Public power systems are not-for-profit and provide electricity at affordable rates with unbeaten reliability. Your local public power provider invests in your community, providing local jobs and supporting your local economy. Electricities of North Carolina is the energy behind public power. Learn more at electricities.com. This is Adam Gold. There are two groups of people who do not really know how college sports works. One are fans. It's not your job. And the other, people who get paid to represent citizens of the United States on Capitol Hill. The Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold, Victoria producing the program. Do you have a bracket yet? Not yet. I was just looking at printable versions. I have a bracket. I also, I'm going to fill out a women's bracket as well. Mm -hmm. Um, The women also have gone to a 68 team event. uh, So they will also have a first four. And let's see. 
Uh, NC State picked up, excuse me, turn my page. Uh, NC State picked up the three seed in. I don't know, yeah, we're not in Chattanooga. Like Albany one, Albany two, Portland three, Portland four. What are we? What? I, have no I don't even idea. understand. Um, anyway, yeah, they're. Uh, uh, they're the number uh, three seed mm-hmm. uh, in the same region where Texas is the number one. They could meet Stanford in the Elite Eight. Florida State is also in the same region. North Carolina is an eight seed. In uh, you know, you win a game, you get South Carolina. Thanks for playing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, Notre Dame is the two seed in that region. Louisville is a six. Virginia Tech and Duke are in the same region with Southern Cal. Virginia Tech's a four. Duke's a seven. Seven. Teams from the ACC made the women's field. Yep. Uh, all right. Q and A time. One timers. Okay. Now, kicking things off, NC State with a huge win. Proud of those guys. Awesome achievement. Yes. So they obviously have all of the momentum going into the NCAA tournament right yep. now. But what might be an issue for them going up against number six Texas Tech? I mean, just getting back up. Sometimes it's hard to uh, to continue doing what you do. Like, I would give them a better chance if the game was today. Yeah. <laughs> right? A little too much but time. Just, yeah, I mean, you, you, so you can, you can get out of rhythm sitting around for five days, four days, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, but I ain't worried. Yeah. I like State's chances against Texas Tech. Can you beat Kentucky the next time out? Maybe Oakland beats Kentucky. Look, the tournament is weird. Mm -hmm. It always is. It's always weird. Yeah. Uh, But what I like about State is what we were looking for over the last four games of the regular season, and we didn't necessarily see, which is a lot of different players contributing. We'll talk to one of them, Michael O'Connell, coming up in about 20 minutes. Well, that kind of leads into the next one. So UNC actually has a little more time off than all of them when the NCAA tournament starts. So do you think that's going to hurt them, seeing how they did in the ACC tournament where they had some days off? What, UNC? Yeah. No, no. I don't, I'm, I'm not worried. First of all, I'm not worried about them in game one. No. Okay. Um, but like I've seen some people say that, you know, North Carolina, because they're not necessarily a great offensive team. The one thing that they do really well, kind of let them down against State, but that was also a lot about State, right? Which which shows you more than anything that if you're not ready, anybody can beat you. UMBC was not better than Virginia, especially that Virginia team that had pros on it. That Virginia team had legit pros on it and lost. So I'm not worried about the Tar Heels. Uh, the real worry would come, you know, probably in the Sweet 16 for them because uh, I think they'll be ready. So that lead, well, that led to the next one. So UNC, they're either going to play Mississippi State or Michigan State. Either of these teams, do you see maybe they might prefer to play nah, they're when bo- it's styles, maybe? Neither team is very good. The one worry would be Michigan State because Tom Izzo, you know, Izzo in March. How many national championships have they won? Right. Uno. Uno. It's it's not a fallacy, but they it's like like they own the month. Can we stop? Anyway, uh, I like the Tar Heels to win against either of those teams because neither of them are that great. Okay, well, and moving on to our Carolina Hurricanes. Now, Jack Drury's still out with his injury, and uh, if he were to be healthy, say, for the next game or anytime soon in the next couple of games, with how hot they've been, with these adjustments, do you see Rod tweaking anything once he's healthy again? No, he's healthy again. He draws in for Kokaniemi. Teravainen, uh healthy. He draws back in for Lemieux. Um, and there you go. And Carolina's loaded top to bottom. Honestly, it might be the best forward group that they have ever had. Yeah. I mean, I'm, not, I'm just not lying. Yeah. Well, and last but not least might be a quick one. So what was the Canes' struggle in a nutshell to get them to score against the Maple Leaves? Till the very end, of course. Um, I've, I've, they just had a hard time managing the puck. They weren't great in the game. They just, you know, when you don't have the puck, it's it becomes harder to score. I, this is not necessarily rocket science. Yeah, but it was managing the puck. 
Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. The wait is over, North Carolina. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live here in North Carolina. Adam Gold here, and I want you to be able to first for yourself into the next economic stratosphere. And all you got to do is sign up, FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. Do it today and get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager. So UVA and Colorado State have at it. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold to get started. $250 in bonus bets awaits win or lose when you place your first $5 wager. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. You call that a precision stop? When a rookie stunt driver, just give me a shot, meets the trainer who thought he'd seen it all. Come on, focus. They'll soon find out that behind the wheel of the Nissan Rogue, with the power of VC turbo and the most fuel-efficient gas-powered engine in its class, watch this. The protege can become a master. But this is no ordinary blockbuster. It's a Nissan sales event ad. Level up your drive with 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Shop the Nissan sales event. Visit your local Nissan store and NissanUSA.com today. Auto Pacific segmentation excluding hybrids and electric vehicles. 2024 APA fuel economy estimates from 28 city, 34 highway to 30 city, 37 highway for 2024 Nissan Rogue. Actual mileage may vary. For well-qualified buyers, 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on new 2023 Rogue and dealer stock. Example, 60 months financing at $17.48 per month per thousand financed. Actual down payment may vary. Subject to residency restrictions and in-mat credit approval. Not all buyers qualify. Dealer contribution may affect actual price set by dealer. Contact dealer for details. Ends 4 one Your new Academy Sports and Outdoors store is now open in Nightdale with great brands at the best prices. In here, you'll always find the gear you need to do what you love out there. Get it all at your new Academy Sports and Outdoors store in Nightdale. This is Gordon Miller, founder of Miller Lending and Carey, with two exciting announcements. Back in 1950, my father and uncle moved to Detroit and opened Miller Brothers Realty, a business they ran for the next 50 years. Fast forward to 1996, and I moved my family to Raleigh and opened D&J Mortgage, a company I'd named after my children. And today I'm happy to announce my sons Daniel and Justin will be leading Miller Lending as we head towards 100 years in real estate and lending, all the while following the one basic principle I learned growing up in that environment. Always treat your customer as you'd want to be treated yourself. Now, while Miller Lending has long been associated with our popular No Closing Cost program, I'm also excited to announce the opening of our Purchase Money Division with a strong emphasis toward helping first-time homebuyers navigate the mortgage process. So whether you're buying a new home or simply refinancing the home you're in, call Miller Lending and experience the benefit of working with a locally owned family business. In Cary, 919-447-3377 or simply apply online at MillerLending.com. Miller Lending is an equal housing lender, MLS number 250-2146. March, as we all know, is a critical time to check your home's windows. I'm Tim Donnelly, and if yours are cracked or leaking or won't stay open or won't open at all, then it's time to call the pros at Window Nation. Right now, for every two windows you buy, you'll get two windows free, plus zero down, zero interest, and no payments for 24 months. With proven quality and service, it's no wonder thousands have trusted Window Nation. Don't miss out. Call 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com to schedule your free in-home estimate. This hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. You can feel the madness! Go to gotbrian.com. That's gotbrian.com. WCMC HD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. I don't know why anybody that's got the recent history of these guys is celebrating. (laughs) Anything except, I guess, being here. I mean, that's it. That's all I can see. Ernest Ross, Sickles. Those are are the three goggles, Coach. I know what they are. But let's not celebrate until we win a game or two. <laughs> Your final score. There's the horn, 83-65. The pack wins for the 19th time this season. And Syracuse heads back to the uh, town where the sun never shines. 
It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold. That's the voice of the Wolfpack, Gary Hahn. This is last year. I know. What a way to go out. Great way to send Gary Hahn off. Uh, and there are more basketball games to call because the NCAA tournament for the Wolfpack, it begins on uh, Thursday night, 940. Uh, probably tip off uh, close to the quarter after 10. It's what happens with college basketball. There are the timeouts are longer. The timeouts are more frequent because they add an additional media timeout to it. So there's a, a longer break. Um, and then the games, because of the nature of the games, generally take longer. Yeah. So, yeah. If the Wolfpack tip off before 10, it'll be a bit of an upset. <laughs> yeah. And even though they claim that there's only 30, tw- 20 minutes in between games, yeah, it's really 30. Oof. It's really, yeah. it's closer to 30. That's up. Anyway, uh, they'll, uh, I think I think we'll all stay awake Thursday night. Although, <laughs> yeah. Thursday night, I'll be at PNC Arena. I was going to say, it's another Canes. Uh, Hurricanes and the Philadelphia Flyers on Thursday night. Yep. So, uh, I'll be done. Maybe I'll watch that one during the podcast. Yeah. Actually, by 940, hopefully it will already be in the aftermath by 940, uh, talking about a Hurricanes' fifth consecutive win, because mm-hmm. the Hurricanes have now won three in a row. And they will go for four against the Islanders tomorrow And you'll have night. audio and visual, both of them. Maybe. Hopefully. Knock on wood. You just never know. Knock on wood. Again, I blame <laughs> NC State for yes. uh, messing up everything. Uh, it's really me uh, sh- kind of shifting the blame from me <laughs> to them. Uh, it's all It's all good. Uh, I am Adam Gold. That is Victoria. We're going to do, I want to talk a little bit about two things uh, in this segment. Yes, uh, we've talk, already talked about the Wolfpack. We're going to talk to Michael O'Connell coming up in about 12 minutes or so. Uh, Mike DeCourcy at the bottom of the hour, so we'll get all the way back in to the NCAA tournament and your brackets. Uh, and this is sort of where we're going to go right now because the Wolfpack, not the Wolfpack, um, we have three schools that declined bids to the NIT. North Carolina did this last year. And I said it last year. I'm not backing off this. Uh, I think it means, it says to me, that you are above the NIT. And I understand there is a mindset out there that the NIT doesn't matter. Like, if you win it, you can certainly put a banner up. I don't think there would be any shame in saying we won the NIT. For some schools, it is a badge of honor to be invited to the NIT. But it's all perspective. It is, and it depends on where you are on the basketball food chain. But while I disagree with the mindset, I can understand why North Carolina would feel like, eh, we're way above that, so they begged out last year. And they had a difficult year, which is why they were in the— uh, you know, offered an invite to the NIT. St. John's, Oklahoma, and Pittsburgh were among the schools who said, yeah, nah. And here's my question. St. John's, you have been dog poop for how long now? Go play in the NIT. Oklahoma, who the hell are you? And look, I love the Capel brothers. You got two freshmen on your squad. Go let them play a single elimination tournament, like a national tournament, right? It's the NIT. I get it. Nobody wants to. We are number 69, which is nice, but, you know, how nice really? But I have a question. Like, it's, it's twofold. One is, is the NIT even worth it? Is it worth fixing? The answer to that might be no. Two things that we know. One, they are already starting to devalue it by eliminating the automatic bids for those smaller conference schools that win their league during the regular season but don't win their conference championship and get the automatic bid. So if you finish first in the MEAC, 
and I believe this year it was Norfolk State. Well, you're not getting a bid to the NIT because Howard ended up winning that league. Howard, by the way, could end up facing North Carolina if if Howard beats Wagner in the first four game. So they've already decided that we're going to try to make this more of a big boy event. Well, how good is it if the big boys don't want to be in it? So maybe we, we should entertain the, the discussion about getting rid of the NIT altogether, right? A listener has an idea. I'm not going to say is interesting, but it made me laugh, and I'm going to bring oh, it to you in a second. Okay. So here's my idea. And maybe this is because I have become such a big fan of international soccer. But if the NIT champion was automatically placed, we're, and we're, the NCAA basketball tournament is ever expanding. If the NIT champion was automatically placed into the NCAA tournament for the following year, Would that be enough of an incentive to keep these teams in? It might be. I don't know. First thing we have to do, though, is we have to stop with the transfer portal uh, the the day after all the conference tournaments are over. We got to wait till the end of the Final Four before the transfer portal opens. We have to do that. Okay. I mean, that just makes sense. We have there's already players in the portal already. Like Sunday, yesterday, there were players entering the portal. So. If the NIT champion was automatically placed into the NCAA tournament field next year, now your seeding will be determined by how well you play, but you would go into the season knowing that you're in the NCAA tournament if you won the NIT. And the example of that is there are several European soccer, several, there are three European uh, soccer tournaments among all the UEFA nations, all of the nations that have domestic leagues in Europe You can play in the Champions League, which is for the best. And then there's Europa, which is the second tier of clubs in Europe. And the winner of Europa automatically the next year gets a spot in the Champions League. Doesn't make a difference what your team looks like the next year. Automatically gets a spot. What would be the crime in that? I actually think it might be good. Yeah, it may not be bad. So if you are Pitt and you win the NIT... You know that next year you're in the NCAA tournament, which might help on two fronts. One, it would give you experience in single elimination, uh, a national tournament, and might actually help you recruit. Yeah, why not? The following year. Have something to look forward to. I wonder if something like that could be pulled off. But let me just bring up Gary's uh, Gary Spakes on Twitter. He sent this to me because I did wonder, I mean, is the NIT even worth saving? I said it out loud, right? Here's what Gary says to me. The NCAA basketball tournament should go to 96 teams. Now, my brain, like, started to misfire at that point. But wait, wait. I I read through this. He's got a decent amount of points here. Uh, Go to 96 teams. Seeds 9 through 24. I'm laughing. (laughs) Seeds 9 through 24 would be guaranteed two games. It's single elimination. Losers automatically become the NIT field. Ah, interesting. Okay. Uh, And then here's the best point. Seed eight and nine, there's no difference. You're playing each other. You're playing on a a neutral court, and the winner gets the one seed, theoretically, unless you happen to be bracketed near Purdue or Virginia. Uh, in which case you might face a 16 seed. Ha 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 ha. Gosh, I want Purdue to lose again. Um, so there are some benefits that I just asked. How does that fit on a bracket? Uh, and then I I I, I listened through to it. I kind of in my mind, I'm like, wait a second. This might have some. There might be some benefit here, other than 96 teams. Really. Uh, the the only problem is, do you have incentive after losing in the NCAA tournament to continue in an NIT, in a consolation tournament? It's already a consolation tournament, but maybe we then incentivize the NIT. I'm just, there is there is something about this that makes a lot of sense, since the NCAA actually controls the NIT now anyway. Think about it. Let it marinate for a second. 
And um, Gary's got a point. Yeah. I kind of dig it. Yeah, I don't hate it. I kind. I'm talking Makes myself. Sense. I'm talking myself into it. Uh, <laughs> but I do think that we need to incentivize the NIT, and I am not concerned one single bit that the team that you put on the floor and win the NIT with might not be the same team you bring back the next year. Oh, well. That happens in college basketball anyway. Already. Every year the teams are different. So I got no problem with that. I would love to see something like that. So, Gary, shouts to you, my man. I appreciate it. All right. Michael O'Connell is going to join us on the other side. Will he ever have to pay for a drink in Raleigh again? Ever. Next. Rally to Boom, Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Evan Canty and Michelle are unsportsmanlike. Say what you want about Justin Fields, all of the physical talents, the highlight level plays, but he's still a question mark in terms of whether or not he's going to be an above average quarterback in the National Football League. And that alone was enough for the Chicago Bears to get off of the roller coaster and decide to go in a different direction and draft a quarterback with the number one overall pick. Mornings from 6 to 9 on 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. Hey, it's Adam Gold from my man, Coach Pete Deruta, Capital Financial Advisory Group in Apex. Let me talk to homeowners out there. You know the worst thing you can have in your house, termites. The last thing you want to hear is you have termites because that eats away at your foundation. You know, Coach Pete has determined that there are financial termites as well that eat away at your retirement planning. So what you need to do is get to Coach Pete Deruta, Capital Financial Advisory Group in Apex, and make sure that financial termites are aren't eating away at your savings, at your future. Coach Pete Deruta is an expert in financial planning for retirement, and all you need to do is text ADAM to 600-700, and automatically you get one of Coach Pete's best-selling books. He's got a bunch of those on retirement planning and the total customized retirement plan for you. It's a $1,000 value. Yours free if you text ADAM to 600-700 right now and let Coach Pete Deruta help you plan for your retirement. Text ADAM to 600-700. 700 for Coach Pete DeRuta. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment, and Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56 volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4 3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Guys, if your bedroom stats need help, let us help make your year a slam dunk. If you're suffering from ED, know that you're not alone. At Arise Urology Clinic for Men and Carry, we can help you get off the bench and back in the game with Core Wave Therapy. We're the only ones in the area to offer this exciting, cutting edge technology that brings new hope to men relying on pills or painful injections. Call Arise Urology Clinic for Men and Carry at 919 459 5400 or visit corewavetherapy.com. Hey, didn't see you downtown last weekend. Nope, we had a night out at the new Salt and Lime by the Raleigh Grand. What? No Sharkies? Well, I love Sharkies, but we had to try Salt and Lime's Baja Mexican menu. The food and atmosphere there is great. Just love it. And we had a pre-dinner drink around the corner at that new wine bar, The Mix. It's almost next door to Sharkies. Excellent drinks, great selection of wine, and they had live music. Well, that's perfect. It was. Next week, it's House of Hops. I just love the relaxed atmosphere, and the beer selection is out of this world. Then Sharkies for some late night entertainment. Every place is so convenient. I know, they're just a stone's throw from each other. Yeah, wait, I guess it would depend on the size of the stone and of course who's throwing it. True, the closer they are, the larger the stone could be, right? And if my husband is throwing it, maybe needs to be a small stone. <laughs> Salt and Lime, The Mix, House of Hops, and Sharkies, just a stone's throw from each other. Check them out online and visit soon. Imagine pulling up to PNC Arena on your very own Hurricanes Harley-Davidson motorcycle. That dream can become a reality. The Law Tigers, Tobacco Road, Harley-Davidson, Shiny Side Paint, and your Carolina Hurricanes are teaming up to give the Ultimate Caniac a custom Hurricanes 2023 Harley-Davidson soft tail. The bike will be given away live on the ice at the game on April 5th, and you 
might just win it. Go to KaniaxBike.com. That's KaniaxBike.com for your chance to win this custom-painted beauty of a bike. Do it now. Enter today. This is Adam Gold. Listen, the ACC is not as bad as everyone out there. Joe Lenardi and all the proctologists. <laughs> they, wow. They, Whoa. It's Wait not a as second. bad as... Victoria, did you hear that? <laughs> it's a proctologist. The Adam Gold Show. Michael O'Connell is, I mean, a hero forever in NC State basketball lore. The shot against Virginia is one that will be replayed forever and ever and ever. And when the time comes, Michael, you will never have to buy a drink in downtown Raleigh for the rest of your life. (laughs) He joins us on the Adam Gold Show. Uh, First of all, have you come down from five games in five days and cutting the nets down and all of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely say now we're starting to come down and starting to focus more on our, uh, you know, next thing at hand. But it was definitely, it was definitely an unbelievable accom- accomplishment with the guys and the team. You know, fighting through all the adversity, winning those five games in five days, and you know, obviously t- yesterday doing the watch party with all the fans was an <laughs> unbelievable experience. So. But yeah, definitely now we're definitely coming back to Earth and um, getting ready for our next game at hand. So you're a lacrosse guy uh, as well, and you could have you could have played lacrosse uh, in college as well. And you know you're a Long Island kid, and that's a big sport uh, on Long Island. But um, when people say, "Man, you guys had to go through five games in five days," like isn't like going through everything you went through playing sports as a high schooler? I mean, isn't doesn't that kind of condition you for five games in five days? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. You know, growing up, especially with all the different sports, but even like in AAU basketball, you're you're probably playing three games a day for two or three days over the weekend and stuff like that. And then even in lacrosse, playing multiple games a day in the hot sun. So growing up, um, a lot of us were definitely just kind of getting used to that. But when you get to the college level, it's definitely definitely a little more uh, intense to say, and a little more challenging, especially when you're playing this top competition um, in the ACC. Michael O'Connell is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show, and and by the way, just with lacrosse as an off as an uh, kind of uh, an aside here, and we're not going to really get into it. But there are people hitting you with a stick for no reason; they're just beating you uh, on the arms uh, with a lacrosse stick. I still have never been able to figure that out. All right, so. Uh, let's walk through this. You know, Louisville was Louisville. Syracuse, you guys uh, start to finish, handled them. Now let's get to the Duke game. And you guys just played Duke what, about a week and a half ago, and you guys hung with them and maybe were better for the most part over the first 30 minutes, and then they eventually pull away. What enabled your group to turn that into – what really was, I thought, a start to finish beating. Yeah, I think I think the game plan going into the into the game was huge for us. When, the first time we played them, they beat us to a lot of fifty fifty balls, and they uh, got a lot of offensive rebounds for second chance points. So going into the game, that was one of our focal points was we need to finish possessions and limit that to one limit them to one shot because obviously they're a, a very talented group of guys, and if you're giving them more shots than us, it's going to be tough to beat them. So. Going into the game, we've, we, you know, we've put a priority on that. And I think we did a pretty good job at finishing plays and you know, trying to get our offense started in transition, which helped us get the win. Michael O'Connell is joining us here. Averaged 13 points a game, three assists per game, made nine of 15 three-pointers in the ACC tournament, shooting 60% from the field. I, th- I think the, uh, the, the analytics would tell you to shoot more. Uh, but maybe uh, you can work that out with Coach Keats. Uh, now let's get to the uh, to the next game. And Virginia, and they play a style. The the game is slower, and we all understand that there are fewer possessions. Uh, and then I I noticed that there were a, a lot of people that maybe uh, stopped believing when it was a seven point game in like the last five or so minutes. Where did your belief as a group come from? Yeah, I think I think just it started from the before the tournament started was we have a great chance to go win this championship and make it on to you know the NCAA tournament. So just having that common goal, we knew no matter what we were going to go through, we had to stick together and try to finish the plan. And at the end of the day, you know we just wanted to go out there and just win. So even when things weren't looking good for us and 
wasn't looking bright. We knew we had to try to finish the game to the best of our ability and, you know, just keep fighting to the last whistle. So I think that was a big thing for us. Um, even if we were, you know, didn't make the right shot or they scored, just keeping our heads leveled and just going out there to make the next play. So walk me through your mindset at the free throw line when Isaac McNeely is an 85% free thrower. Uh, he's got, I believe, a one-on-one, front, front end of a one-on-one, and that's the game. They make the shot, it's probably over, and if he doesn't, you have a chance. Uh, was there a uh, a play design? Was it all about get the ball to Mike and see what happens? Uh, no, it was just <laughs> honestly, we, he obviously missed the shot, and Casey, you know, outlet it to me, and my thing was just get up the court and try to go make a play, whether it was for myself or just try to, you know, maybe draw someone and kick it to another great shooter we have. Um, and then just coming up the court, I, I just, you know, had a little bit of room, and I, and I felt some confidence and stepped into it and just, you know, let it fly. Are you surprised that Virginia didn't foul you or anybody in the backcourt? Uh, yeah, so I, after the fact, like, I didn't know in the moment. I wasn't even thinking about it in the moment, <laughs> honestly, that they would, were trying to foul. I was just, you know, my mindset was just trying to get a shot off. But looking back on it, people were kind of telling me that they had some fouls to give. So, um, But, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know their thought process and how they approach it. So I'm, I'm not going to be one to judge. But, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm glad they didn't foul, obviously. If When you become a coach, if you ever become a coach, uh, what would your strategy be? Well, looking back on it and having the experiences I've had, I would for sure foul. <laughs> Certainly. I wonder if Tony Bennett is going to rethink that whole strategy. Michael O'Connell is joining us here. Um, now, let me, let me ask you about this, the Carolina game. Obviously, that's the big one. Um, and again, another team that, you know, the first one you guys got off to, uh, I mean, they just, they were so good in the first one. The second one, you guys played with them toe-to-toe for basically half the game. Uh, and I don't know how much of that you carried over, but they absorbed the first punch, actually took a lead. But then in the second half, you guys just had more in the tank than they did. Why do you think that is? Uh, I mean, just from, just from our standpoint, I think, you know, we were just, we were just really wanted it and we were ready for it. Obviously we, we played four games prior and, and our, our mindset is, you know, it's just one more. We got to leave everything out there. You know, at the end of the day, it's, we only have, this could be the last game of the season or we're advancing on. So for us, we were just like, we have to, no matter what pain you're going through, how tired you are, it doesn't matter. We just got to figure it out in this moment because these last four, like say four minutes or five minutes of the quarter or half, you know, can last forever. So, we were just trying to band together, trying to talk each other through it when we were tired or things weren't going right, and it just worked out for the best. All right, walk me through the the celebration. Uh, not only – I mean, you, there's two of them, right? There's the one that you guys ex- ex- experienced together, and then at, uh, like, the, the, the watch party yesterday for the selection show. Walk me through those things and what you guys experienced. Yeah, I mean, obviously after the the final whistle and the final horn, it was just you know it was a surreal experience. It was we finally we finally got it done. We won we won those five games, won the AC championship, which uh, NC State hasn't done in a little bit. So it was just just pure excitement and pure joy. We were all we were all just running around, hugging each other, just like trying to really enjoy the whole moment and just really take in everything that's going on at the moment. Um, and then obviously the celebration continued in the locker room. And we just, with the trophy, taking pictures and everything, it was just, we were trying to really capture that moment, be, be in the moment, but also capture it forever um, so we never forget it. And then yesterday, it was an unbelievable experience when we were able to have the fans with us, you know, where we were able to, like, take pictures and all that things and really just kind of bond with fans over the whole experience and everything we've been through and throughout the season. Um, and just really, you know, because obviously we wanted to do it for the, the fans in the university too, which is, which is great to really get their, you know, reactions and their excitement also. 37 years since it's uh since NC State has won a a conference championship in men's basketball, uh maybe the most important school in the history of the ACC to not have won a title in 37 years. The last time they won it, uh it was 3 years after the Islanders. I know I don't know if you're an Islanders fan or not, uh but you grew up in Mineola, which is I don't know, a handful of miles away from Uniondale. Uh, that that was it was three years after the Islanders won their last Stanley Cup. I mean, it's it's forever. I don't even know how you, you you even process any of that. 
Yeah, I mean, it, for, for me too, it was also it was my first championship in college, so it was definitely an exciting moment um, to get with these guys. But yeah, I was just like I said, it's a surreal experience. You know, it's things you've been dreaming about since you were a little kid, just being in these games, hitting these shots, and just celebrating. You know, um, and just going down in the history book. So it was definitely an unbelievable experience, and we were glad we were able to get it done. Final thing, why did you choose state when you uh, when you decided to leave Stanford? For me, honestly, it was big with fit and feel when I when I came out to on the visit, you know, talking with the coaches and just get, getting a real idea for what the, they had in mind for me and then the program as a whole. You know, we both had the collective goal of winning a championship coming in. That was one of the biggest things we talked about. And they saw me as a piece that can go help them win it. And I felt like I could be a piece to fit this team to help win a championship. Um, and then I just, you know, with the guys, the piece they had coming back, I felt like I can – you know, contribute and help that make make them better as well as them make me better. Uh, so it just it felt like the right basketball decision at the time, and uh, it still feels like it at the moment. So, all right, you're gonna do it. In, you're gonna do another year, regardless of what happens in the next tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. I mean, I have another year left on uh, eligibility, so the goal the goal is to be here for sure, and uh, hopefully run it back and keep keep it going. Michael O'Connell, I appreciate your time. The pride of Mineola, New York. By the way, is Mineola North Shore or South Shore? Or because you're kind of in the middle, you don't care? I mean, it's, it's definitely North Shore, but I, I, don't, I don't really claim it like that. I just <laughs> Nassau County. Uh, I'll call it Nassau County, if anything. So. so is there a Nassau, Suffolk County beef? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't say beef. No, it's, that's a little a little extra, but, you know, when you're talking to different people, if you know from stuff, like, you know, you, you might feel a little different way or, you know, make some jokes and stuff like that. But, I mean, everyone, everyone on Long Island, you know, everyone sticks together because that's, that's who we are. We're part of New York. So we've got to make sure we stick together. All right, Michael O'Connell, congratulations on not only an iconic shot, but a great run and being a big part of it. Uh, and good luck starting on Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So there are two counties on Long Island. Nassau County is closer to New York City. Suffolk County is where the the Hamptons are. But you got to go all the way to the end of Suffolk County before you get to the good stuff. No offense uh, to the rest of Suffolk County. Um, but so I'm just curious. There is oh, yeah. North Shore and South Shore kind of different. I was going to say, isn't that a thing up there? Like, oh, I'm from this side or that side. It's or- everywhere. I mean, yeah, but we 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 it's have arguments. Up there. <laughs> we have arguments over barbecue. Yeah, we do. And yes, I know there are differences there between are. Uh, Eastern and, and Western. Western yep. But there's not that big a difference. It just isn't between the two. Between Eastern and Western barbecue. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's not mustard. No, oh my it's not gosh! Not what whatever those heathens between are eating in vinegar- South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, that's just wrong. It's that's not that big wrong. a difference. Vinegar and tomato paste is a little bit of a difference. I, I I'm not saying there's no difference. I'm just saying it's not that big a difference. <laughs> they, I mean, they both have a lot of the same properties in it, and the yeah. the meat is the same. <laughs> no, I've, no, really? I, I can't agree with that. I, but I mean, I've lived here I my whole life, nerve. so I struck a nerve. <laughs> just like no, that's a shame. it's not. It's. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. You're entitled to your opinion, but they are not the same. <laughs> so, which do you prefer? Oh, I like both. See, that's the no, thing. No. I like both kinds, but they're definitely not the same. Well, I don't think you are. Are you allowed to like both kinds? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I do, I do but. Sometimes, like, for me, if you just want the barbecue, then it's better to have, like, Eastern style. But if you want, like, a sandwich that's sloppy, Western's perfect. So Western, With, like, coleslaw and Western all that is more tomatoey. Yes. Yeah, it's like a sloppy joe. It should be anyway. If it's <laughs> it should be it, the sauce should almost be like sloppy joes. That's too much sauce. I don't need that much sauce. Yeah, well, you know, some you people like easy to sop on it. it up. You go easy on it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I actually prefer the coleslaw on the eastern than I yeah. do the western. That's okay. That's good. Cuz you know, coleslaw is a whole nother thing. How are we making the coleslaw cuz some people don't know how to do that either. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want yellow Whole coleslaw. Thing. Oh no. No, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't want yellow. No, you probably stuff. like your tea unsweet too. Let's not. I don't do tea. Yeah. It's, Sorry, it's what one. It's the one I, thing. Only where splurge. I, it's a lot of sugar, so it's not a regular thing for me. <laughs> I don't do tea. I don't do the. Uh, I don't do that. No. Um, I am sorry. I don't 
feel like there's that big a difference between Eastern and Western North Carolina barbecue, but I like both. Uh, my preference, I think, is Western, but only slightly, and it really is a mood for me. And I just, but I, for some people, like, what are you talking about, Gold? Clearly, that's exactly where Victoria was. Uh, all right, Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News is about to join us, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the tournament. And I have some questions about how we go through this. The The Big East got three teams into the field. Connecticut, who is, I think, the best team in the nation by a considerable margin. Doesn't mean they're going to win it. Marquette, and who was the other team that got a, uh, got a high seed? They had three... Three teams seeded, uh, one seeded one, one seeded two, one seeded three. And then nothing else. They got no other teams into the field. This is just, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing to me. And it brings up the mind, the, the, the thought that teams get bids, not leagues. But I have questions about that. We'll bring in Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News, who joins us on the Adam Gold Show. I did uh, bring up the barbecue discussion to Mike, oh, just so you know, because I'm curious now what he thinks. Oh, so Mike is originally from Pittsburgh, so he puts fries on sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> and calls it gravy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have, actually, I haven't gotten into that. Uh, I have never heard Mike say yins, though, so uh, I'm not sure. Do you? Oh. Have, I know Mike has family here in uh, in the Triangle. Uh, do uh, do you or they have a preference, Eastern or North Carolina barbecue? East, it, it, I get confused, uh, and now I'm <laughs> confused again. Even though he, uh, Victor, uh, even though we just talked about it, um, <laughs> what what is the one that has the mustard and vinegar? No, that the, is mu- like mustard is South Carolina. Those people, those people should be. I don't know. I'm not even going to. Okay. I'm not going to be. Dis- uh, I've already disparaged it enough. I know. Keep mustard away from barbecue. Yes. Yeah. Also <laughs> vinegar. I, I, okay. Then you're I'm a Western not. North Carolina guy. So I am a Western person. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I am a Memphis person above all. Ah. I've lived there for four years and and put on way too many pounds eating that stuff. <laughs> um, that it is. It is the best uh, to me and will always be so. Okay. I'm pit barbecue is different from uh, you know people throwing a half a hog in the ground uh and cooking it slow uh over the course of an entire day uh they're two completely different uh, i was going to say animals but actually yes uh, <laughs> all right so let's let's talk about the tournament first i want to make this clear if you didn't get in you didn't get screwed there's no team that gets left out that gets screwed in my opinion because what you've done is you've given the committee a reason to exclude you. You could have always done more. Now, with that said, I do raise my eyebrows at certain decisions. The ACC did get five. Uh, I would, I will forever say that Pitt and Wake are both better than Virginia, who did get in the field. Um, and I respect Virginia's start. They had a great start to the season, then went through uh, a rough patch, then started to win a lot of games. Uh, but man, especially Pitt. I think Pitt. I think Pitt's better than Virginia. I also, also think Wake's uh, better than Virginia. But uh, do you have any uh, problems with the brackets? Well, I, and first of all, first of all, you, that you think Pitt is better than Virginia is a worthy opinion, but it doesn't have anything to do with the process, right? <laughs> That's uh, now. If you say that you, it does in Pitt's football. Best, well, but football's dumb and doesn't have a real championship or doesn't until this year. And for all we know, basically, they're they're going to have their first ever and last ever real championship. So enjoy it. <laughs> uh, but basketball has a real championship every year. Right. Because every single team, Chicago State accepted, but I believe they're joining a conference next year. So every single team has the opportunity to earn their way into this field. And don't tell me it can't happen because it happened at NC State. Right. So there's that. If you if you believe that Virginia's resume is inferior to Pitt's and Wake's, then you kind of have to demonstrate how. Now, I didn't think that Virginia had an NCAA tournament resume based on the available positions. Mm-hmm. With a broader bubble, 
which we had on Tuesday but didn't by Sunday, I had them in. But they were the one team that I missed out of the 68 uh, by, the, by, mm. by the end of Selection Sunday. They're the one team I missed. I had Oklahoma in instead of them. Uh, I never thought that Pitt was going to get in based on the fact Agreed. that they had poor quality losses like Missouri at home. Mm-hmm. You lose games like that, they have consequences, especially when you schedule so few high-end games that can help you. And, you know, I hear all this complaint about the ACC and what the, what the Big 12 did and all that. And at the end of the day, you have to be able to look at your league and say, Louisville's a mess. They're going to kill us. Notre Dame's in transition. Mike is a great coach, but he's not a miracle worker. Um, it, and you look through your league and you see this, and Syracuse is in transition. Uh, they, aren't going, they, aren't, they are not likely to be great. Uh, Boston College has never gotten off the deck, no matter how hard they fought, and they have fought hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you had Georgia Tech in transition. You had, what, three new coaches in the league uh, yeah. and one who was floundering. Uh, that's that's a lot to deal with. And so you've got to say, our league isn't going to help us. We have to help ourselves. The Big 12 didn't have to say that. They were coming off the strongest, most balanced league in the history of college basketball. They had 10 teams that were nearly NCAA tournament worthy last year out of 10. So they knew they were in for another rough ride. Uh, and and some of the teams should, look, some of the teams should have scheduled better. And a team like you, yeah. for what little they did, didn't get that done. Uh, and I could, I could have easily seen TCU miss this field. Uh, but that, it, it frustrates me, Adam, when I hear coaches complain mm-hmm. about the process, and, but at the same time say they don't know the process. I know. That's, like, you, that's like me saying I'm a basketball analyst, studio analyst for the Big Ten Network, but I don't know what a pick and roll is. Can you explain it to me? Or no, not even be- better than that. Not asking you to explain it to me because it's too hard to ask the question. Coaches have been doing this forever. We they they did it in the early days of the BCS. Well, I don't understand the formula. Like you don't have to understand the formula other than schedule good teams and beat them. That's the only formula you ever needed to know. But they because they made these grandiose statements about it's too complicated. Then they went and they dumbed down the formula to its own detriment when a, a system like that needed more data, not less data. I here's the thing, your what your your point about like I don't want to make I, I talk about the Big Twelve a lot because of how um, you know for a while we thought nine teams were going to get in and I don't disagree with you about Oklahoma uh, based on you know the the strength of the Big Twelve at least the perceived strength of the Big Twelve. I anticipated them getting in as well. Uh, But reputation is not supposed to matter. uh, And because it's not just the fact that what they have, uh, six teams uh, had non-conference schedule strengths in the 300s. And by the way, Pitts was there as well. But there were like three others in the 200s. So it's not like the league extended themselves outside of conference play only two of them were in the one were you know better than a hundred uh kansas who had the best at 60 and baylor who had second best at 94 um so it seemed to me it was a strategy to make the league to guarantee that the that every league game would be better i i was texting back and forth uh, tr- I, i'm trying to remember who it was with it might have been jerry palm who i believe you quoted in a story that you wrote uh, for sportingnews.com about how like Iowa State played like 18 quad one games. There's no way they played 18 games that are worthy of quad one unless the system is sort of rigged in that fi- in in their favor. And I'm not saying that they didn't play a, a good. I'm not saying that the Big 12 is not good, but no league is that good. Um, and if well, they there were, are they years when leagues are that good, though. There are. See, was it this year? Bothers, was that were they this year? I don't think so. Right. I don't think they were that great. But I, what I will say is that the the simplistic response to what happened this year is let's go schedule three hundreds and we'll be great. Well, that's fine, but Louisville is going to lose those games, <laughs> and that's going to hurt you. <laughs> right. I mean, the, the twenty twenty four Louisville or twenty twenty three especially, they're going to lose those games. That's going to hurt you. 
it, when when the Big Ten was getting nine or eight in yeah. over the previous three years, they were not doing that. So the idea that you can game this is, I think, a little bit it, it's speculative and it's dangerous. You're you're supposing you can do it because somebody got away with it, but you also could find out that it doesn't work and it costs you. So I, if the agency mm-hmm. wants to go do this, go do it. That's no, fine. I, don't I don't want care. them to do it. I don't, but I, I don't want I other don't, teams to I'm do it either. If they decide, that's fine. Because my point has, about scheduling has always been this. You schedule to what you think your team needs to get ready for the league and for March. You do it. You're, it's right. your choice. But when you do, there will be consequences to that to, to the decision either if you schedule too hard and you grind your team into hamburger or you schedule too soft and your team gets bored or you schedule too soft and the committee says that's a seed line or that's two seed lines now the consequences may not be great but they exist and that's what that's what each team has to decide for itself but when the SEC got better in basketball they did not get better by scheduling 300s right they got better by scheduling more challenging games and it has completely revolutionized their league i agree i I think the sec is a very good league will it matter mike de of the sporting news will it matter uh to the narrative if the acc has another like they have the last three years run in march where Hey, how did that team get to a Final Four, Miami? How did that team get to a Sweet 16 when they probably should have been, shouldn't have been in the field, Syracuse? Will it matter to the narrative? Because three years in a row, that stuff has happened, and uh, it has been conveniently forgotten. Well, I think that, it, look, if Clemson winds up in the Elite Eight, like, call me. You know, I mean, because, you know, Clemson just got done losing to Boston College by yeah. 25. So, um, I, 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 if, if, if North Carolina and Duke make the sweet 16 say, um, you know, I, they're, they're North Carolina and Duke they, and they are they should. suited to get there. Right. They should get like the, the, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of conversation about the mountain West getting six teams. And then a lot of them are going to lose, if not all in, in, before we get to the regional round, um, because they're seated to do that. Right. I, I always, I always say, Adam, uh, if somebody doesn't lose the games, we'll be playing forever. That's <laughs> what they're there for. And so, you know, they seeded nearly every Mountain West team except San Diego State into a loss. Why they did that, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't understand how you can elevate San Diego State with a mediocre resume to a five and punish right. Nevada with a much stronger resume all the way down to a ten. The, the disparity there doesn't make any sense because they're basically playing in the same swimming pool so how does one get wet and the other doesn't? I I don't understand that. And if you uh, and, and are, you, aren't if you are you saying like six Mountain West Conference teams made it, uh, and obviously New Mexico gets in because they won the tournament, correct? They won the correct. They they yeah, wouldn't they would have gotten have in made. otherwise. Yes. Right. So New Mexico State they didn't steal one of their own bids, which is somewhat curious, uh, since theoretically that should happen but it didn't it didn't happen in the acc's case either virginia was still allowed to play uh in the first four even though nc state stole a bit from somebody um but if if all of your teams are scheduled in the same general area aren't they basically saying that the league yeah these teams were good but there weren't that good it like the whole notion that that leagues don't get bids teams do it misses me from this standpoint is that more than half of your schedule are league games? Sure. So, are isn't that isn't that a contradiction right off the bounce that well, leagues I do mean, get bids? To an extent, leagues. The what the like I said, the 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 pool you're in will help you get bid. We will help you get a bid. It if you're playing difficult games every night, it'll either help you or hurt you. If you're not quite good enough, it's going to hurt you. It's going to punish you. Uh, you're going to, oh, my goodness, here comes another game with str- a struggle to win. Oh, there's another L. That happens in leagues. Uh, and, and in some other leagues, it helps to have teams like, oh, gosh, Louisville's coming to town. We're really yeah. struggling. This is going to help so much. Um, so <laughs> it, it, it all makes a difference in how, in how you are uh, evaluated, without a doubt. But it, they don't say, well, you finished fourth in your league, 
And so you have to right. go because we're, we're putting fifth in. And they don't say, well, we've already got six Mountain West teams. We can't put a seventh in. They don't do that. Correct. That 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 I 100% agree with. Uh, but it's I think it's a uh, it's it's inaccurate to say that leagues don't get teams because you play so many more games against your league. All right, um, let me just close on this with Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News. Uh, we we th- this is not a prediction of what will happen. Is Connecticut as m- I think they are clearly the best team in the country. I don't think there is a team that has. Uh, as much as Connecticut has. Again, doesn't guarantee anything. They could lose to anybody, maybe not anybody, but uh, there's no guarantee that they even get to the second week because basketball is this way. Uh, but do you see Connecticut as the clear favorite as well? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of the last time that I looked at the field and saw uh, as big a disparity between Connecticut and the rest of the field. And I don't want to invoke 1991 Vegas because I think that sounds <laughs> like I'm putting them in that category and they're not in that category. Right. But it, it's, it's, it's more the year than it is the team. Okay. UConn is the one team that I look at of all the teams in this field. And I say they have everything that a typical champion has. The only one. Out of everybody. And I mean, like, you can look at the one line, the two line. Uh, Tennessee's not that far off, but they're so inconsistent offensively. Um, but they're, the rest of them just don't have what you usually have. Arizona's point guard, Kylan Boswell, I think he's going to be a good player. He's not there yet. And maybe he becomes that player this month, but it's gonna, he's going to have to hustle because he wasn't it that last week. Uh, and so that's what, that's what I see when I look at UConn. There are just certain qualities that every champion has, and the the most obvious ones are a few, you know, at least one NBA first round draft pick on their team, rim protection uh, from a, from a shot blocker, a top twenty offense and defense, a point guard who knows, preferably who's a pro, but at the and or maybe a a high school five star, right? But at least knows his way around the the, the backcourt at a high level in the way that Tristan Newton. Uh, does for UConn now and you have to have all of these things and a few others if you don't you look like you might win it you're rolling through this thing and eventually you run into a wall it happens every year to somebody yeah uh here's why uh UConn will probably win it uh Ron Palillo the late Ron Palillo Arnold Horshack is a (laughs) University of Connecticut grad uh, and really, that's all the analysis anybody needs. That is Mike DeCourcy <laughs> of the Sporting News at TSN Mike on Twitter. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for have uh, for hanging out. I appreciate it. Thanks, Adam. You got it. Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News. All right, when we come back, I think we're only going to have time for bets. We'll yeah. get right to it. Oh, yeah, jump in. Wagering. Next. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Agriculture drives our local economy. I'm Lee Ivey, director of the Agriculture Institute at NC State University, and we are looking for our next generation of leaders. If you want to make a difference and help feed the world, join us at the Ag Institute, where we grow successful graduates, productive futures, and rewarding lifestyles. We offer two-year degrees and hundreds of internships. Learn more online by searching NC State Ag Institute. Deadline for fall enrollment is June 1st. Two years, one degree, endless possibilities. North Carolina, we are finally in it. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live here in our great state. And right now, new customers get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you wager your first $5. That's right. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up, and then you can bet on everything from the money line, who's going to win, total points, which team will cut the nets down, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Take the court with $250 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you make your first $5 wager. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You must be 21 years of age and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit more than a game everyone goes through tough times and everyone can get through them 
as long as they don't have to do it alone. Dial 988 if you need someone to talk to. Get what you need to get to a better place. Together, we'll find the care that works best for you. We're here 24-7. Call, text, or chat 988. 988. Let's get through it together. Brought to you by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. This year, more than 600,000 people are eligible for coverage under the new Medicaid expansion program passed by the North Carolina State Legislature. This means that more people than ever before qualify for services. Brian Floyd is the Chief Operating Officer of ECU Health and discusses these issues on this month's Conversations on Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association. Rural communities are affected even more because people who don't have insurance will seek out care in the emergency department. We really want people to get Medicaid expansion, get to see a primary care doctor, and avoid the use of an emergency department that consumes those resources that might really be needed for true emergencies. You can listen to the rest of this discussion on Conversations on the State of Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Learn more about Medicaid expansion and other important healthcare issues at nchealthcare.org. That's nchealthcare.org. During this sports season, the Governor's Highway Safety Program would like to remind you to buckle your seatbelt when traveling to and from athletic events. Whether you are driving out of or across town, wearing a seatbelt is your best defense against injury or death in a crash. Start the season off right, prioritize your safety, and buckle up. Every seat, every time. Remember, click it or ticket. It's the law. This message is brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Think earning a degree is out of reach? Well, if you're a North Carolinian from a household making $80,000 or less, it's time to think again. Because the new Next NC Scholarship could cover all of your tuition and fees at any of the 58 NC community colleges, or at least half, if not all of your tuition and fees at one of the 16 public universities across the state. The best part? It doesn't have to be repaid. See if the Next NC Scholarship could be the opportunity for you and how simple it is to apply at nextncscholarship.org. This is Adam Gold. Is a hot dog a sandwich, Mike? It's a pizza sandwich, then it's bread with toppings and stuff. When you fold it, yeah. <laughs> And it's a calzone. <laughs> and a calzone's a sandwich, too. Oh, goodness. They're all under the sandwich umbrella. So is, is that, that, is that, that is, a yes that, or a that no? Is a debate, that is a debate I will never embrace. Mr. Oh, my Gold. gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I am Adam Gold. We had so much fun with Mike DeCourcy talking about uh, meat that uh, we ran long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I apologize we did. for it's all okay. that. We got stuck in one of those conversations. Uh, so I've already given Victoria an assignment for tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to give you our brackets because mm-hmm. uh, tomorrow uh, is when the tournament starts. Why Why do you get a pass to Thursday? <laughs> I know, there yeah. Are four games tomorrow. <laughs> there well, are. Not tomorrow, two tomorrow and two Wednesday. Yeah. They count. Sure. Give me your brackets tomorrow. I don't want none of this crap. Yeah, people just waiting it out. Oh, come on. You're d- exactly. They're just waiting to see what they uh, find on the websites, different just websites. Just figure it out. Yep. All right. Uh, place so, your bets. Place yeah. your bets. Here we are. I bet you slice into the woods a hundred bucks. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slide. Yeah. Okay, you can owe me. I owe you one. Wonder how many bets are being placed on these brackets right now, now that it's legal. <laughs> I have not done. You can, like, I know there. I mean, all the sites you can do a bracket. Oh yeah. You can pick a bracket. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. And you get like uh, a lifetime supply of. Well, I don't know. Chicken wings, if you get, you're, if you're perfect. <laughs> oh wow! Probably more than that. Should be barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Should be more than that. <laughs> well, I'm kicking things off with things on the ice. Washington right. Capitals are going to be taking on the Calgary Flames. Both these teams have kind of been on the struggle bus this season, and uh, I think Nazim Kadri might be an anytime goal scorer. So give me him plus one ninety. All right, let's go to the women's tournament. Gosh, we're almost out of time already. These bets are going to have to go to the other side. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, bet on either UNC or Duke to make it to the women's 
Sweet 16. Ah, yes. Give me that at plus 450. Whoa. I like that. Give me one, two shots. Yeah. One of them to get to the Sweet 16. Plus 450? Yeah, plus 450. Neither are seated really high, but yeah. I'll take a chance on that. Plus 450. All right. The rest of the bets will come up on the other side. Also, historically, what about this NC State? championship. Rally to boom. Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. North Carolina, my friends, FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and we are ready to help you enjoy the tournament even more than you already have. And right now, new customers can get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you make your first $5 wager. You don't even have to win it, and you get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold to sign up now, and then you decide how you want to do it. The best thing about it, you don't even need brackets. Every game is its own bracket. $250 in bonus bets awaits. Win or lose when you place your first $5 wager. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code ADAMGOLD to get started. And remember, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5500. 43 or visit more than a game.nc.com. Hey, what are you doing up on the step stool? About to clean these light fixtures. The whole family's coming over, and if there's even a speck of dust in the house, my abuela will find it. Here, I got a Swiffer duster to help with that. A Swiffer what? A Swiffer duster. It has this cool extendable handle that reaches six feet to get high and low with fluffy dusters that easily trap and lock dust. So, no more step stool? No more step stool. Easily trap and lock dust from hard to reach places with the Swiffer duster. Love it or your money back. Tim Donnelly here, and I want to let you know March is a critical time to check your home's windows. Call the pros at Window Nation. Right now, for every two windows you buy, you get two windows free. Plus zero down, zero interest, and no payments for 24 months. Call 866-90-NATION or visit windownation.com now. What? New scratch-offs are out? That means new chances to become a North Carolina Education Lottery Winners Club member. Yeah, in the Winners Club. I'll reinvent myself. I won't go by just plain Todd. I'll go by Toddrick. I'll get a gold jacket, play my saxophone again. I'll stop and smell the flowers. Call my mom more. Ugh, oh, wrap it up, Todd. It's Toddrick. This month's tickets pack $370 million in total prizes. The Winners Club awaits. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning range from 1 in 2.93 to 4.24. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. You know, for some people, the first time they tried a New York City bagel, it was a life-changing event. Same can be said for New York cheesecake. Incredible stuff. But here's what really changed my life about a dozen years ago. Travers LASIK. Dr. Lori Travers changed my life. I was about 2250 in terms of vision. Couldn't do anything anything without glasses or contacts. Then, about five minutes per eye later, utterly painless 2020 vision. Dr. Lori Travers is the only LASIK specialist in the area, and she made it easy. 0% financing for 24 months is available, and you actually save money in the long run when you consider everything that glasses and contact lenses cost you over time. Think about the convenience. That's right. I just wake up and go. Dr. Lori Travers, Travers LASIK, 919 6830. Get your free consultation. You can set it up online. TraversLasik.com. 919-510-6830. TraversLasik.com. See what you've been missing. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper and you can get it online? Go to hymns.com slash joy. Through Hims, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, and the process is 100% online. To start your free online visit, go to hymns.com slash joy. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. This hour on the Triangle Sports Leader is brought to you by the Ritchie Law Firm Injury Lawyers. You can feel the madness! Go to gotbrian.com. That's gotbrian.com. WCMC HD1 Holly Springs. Take us with you on radio, web, app, Alexa, and YouTube. 99.9 The Fan, the Triangle Sports Leader. I don't know why anybody that's got the recent history of these guys is celebrating. <laughs> oh my Anything except 
I guess being here. I mean, that's it. That's all I can see. Ernest Ross, sick of those are the, Those are the three goggles, yeah. Coach. Yeah. I know what they are. <laughs> yeah. Let's not celebrate until we win a game. Or two. Your final score. There's the horn, 83-65. The Pack wins for the 19th time this season. And Syracuse heads back to the uh, town where the sun never shines. <laughs> ah, I love that. That's so great, Gary Hahn, right there. Fantastic. Oh, we have bets. We have bets holding over, right? Because yes. we because I went way too long with any, with it, uh, Mike DeCourcy. Uh, so we have bets holding over. You've just made one, right? Right. And I have just made one. Mm -hmm. So because this is what we do now, we 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 for entertainment purposes only. Um, yes. This, right. At least here. Right. And look, you're you, we're we're allowed to now. Yeah. Right. But I'm not. Legal. And I I want people to understand. More than likely, I will be wrong. Sure. So I am not in any way suggesting that this is what you should do. <laughs> not at all. Right? We are not fortune tellers. I will say that last week was a good week. Oh, good. Oh, oh yeah. We were, uh, you know, definitely on the plus side. Yeah. The week before was a stupid good week. <laughs> Again. Yeah. It units. happens. It, yeah. yeah. By accident. Right. It happens. And units, right? there's no pressure. Because you exactly. can't pay like bills with units, so no. it's okay. You can't do anything. It's like crypto. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's let's finish up placing bets. Do we have to play, place, place, play the music again? Might as again? well, just in case no one's familiar with this. Yeah, it's it is a different day part now. Yeah. So you started. You went uh, hockey to yes. start. Yes, I uh, went with the Caps and the Flames, and my first one was Nazim Kadri yeah. being anytime goal scorer. All right, uh, plus one ninety. I don't know who I'm rooting for. I mean, the Washington's been playing well, though. Although it's been a tough road trip, mm -hmm. so Washington's right on the edge of playoff uh, of a playoff berth right yep. now. Uh, and I went with either North Carolina or Duke. Carolina seated eight, I believe. Duke seated seven. One of them to make the Sweet Sixteen. That's plus 450. Mm -hmm. You get two shots yeah. uh, at an upset. Uh, all right, continue. Okay, so with the same game, Caps and Flames, because of these two teams kind of having like eh, seasons lately, I think there might be an overtime tonight. So, yes, plus 330 for OT. All right, I'm going to do another women's basketball future. How about Iowa to win it all? I'll go Caitlin Clark to win. Oh, yes. Plus 700. Right, her last time in college. I will say South Carolina is minus money to win. Really? Think about that for a second. Minus money to win. This is Tiger Woods territory. <laughs> yeah. no, no joke. Tiger Woods. You could have made wagers before. Tiger Woods or the other 155 players in the tournament. Right. Right. Wow. What? What are we doing? That's how big a favorite South Carolina is. But I'll take Iowa at plus 700. I, I just don't get it. that. That's yeah. crazy. But LSU's a three seed, and they're the third choice oh. at plus 750. Well, there you yeah, go. Exactly. Uh, my last one is going to be the Buffalo Sabres. They're in Seattle taking on the Kraken. Uh, might be a tough one, but I can see Buffalo scoring a lot. So give me Jared McCain to be an anytime goal scorer, plus 190. All right, I am riding the wave of the Wolfpack. Riding well. the wave. Might as well. NC State, Sweet 16, plus 490. Wow. Okay. Might as well. Get it while it's hot. I'm hanging 10 <laughs> with the Wolfpack. Right. There you go. And you're plus, wearing the red and everything. Plus 490, yes. Uh, I do the Canes Corner podcast, and I actually had this T-shirt on during the Canes Corner podcast. Oh, yes. Don't talk to me about, oh, you're wearing that T-shirt twice the same day. I just put it on for the podcast right. and then took it off. It's not like you I did yard work in it. In it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yard work? What's that? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Uh, so there you go. Wolfpack plus 490 to make the Sweet 16. Those are our three for today. And we won't have. I won't have any results until uh, who knows. Right, soon just later. Yeah, well, like at least a it's week okay. away. I haven't lost anything yet. I know. At least you don't have to worry about being wrong yet. Tomorrow, I will still be at a zero. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, now to a wall of sound. 
the wall of sound is a function of this studio. There's no doubt about it. All right. I want to want to do some football here. Right? Like there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of sound. We haven't talked at all about crazy things that happened in the uh, in NFL free agency. Remember when Russell Wilson signed with the Steelers? We thought, "All right, they got their guy. Russell Wilson's going to be the man. Kenny Pickett uh, you're going to be the backup. Maybe you'll you'll get it. Kenny Pickett was not happy. No. Did not want to be the backup to Russell Wilson, which, you know what? There might not be a big difference between Russell Wilson and Kenny Pickett right now. Uh, and then the Steelers went out and traded for Justin Fields. Got him for nothing. A sixth round pick. Yes. I'll use the same joke I've already used today. The Jets will have to send a sixth-round pick along Wick with Zach Wilson to get a team to trade for him. Wow. Zach Wilson and a sixth, and you give us uh, a uh, a half of uh, a, a turkey. Bears doing bear things. <laughs> so, uh, Lewis Riddick on the Bears, from ESPN, of course, on the Bears trading Justin Fields. If you're the Chicago Bears organization and general manager Ryan Poles, I guess this is what doing right by Justin Fields looks like. Honoring your word, so to speak, moving on from the young man and getting him to a place where potentially he can go on and resume his career, whether that be as a backup and a potential starter or someone who winds up winning the starting job this year and they just take what they can get. So they still cleared the deck in Chicago to make way for who is going to be the incoming first overall pick in the draft. We still don't know who that necessarily is going to be. A lot of the speculation centers around Caleb Williams. I'm not so sold. I think Jaden Daniels is square in the mix. Whoever that young quarterback is, he has some nice weapons to work with. And he has a new offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron. So if you're the Bears, the only way for me, though, that this ultimately looks like a good deal for them overall is whoever this young quarterback is that gets drafted ends up exceeding what they thought that Justin Fields could become in the same circumstances. Obviously, that's the bet that they're making. We'll see how it all plays out. I am blown away. Blown away that the best you could get for Justin Fields was a sixth-round pick. Right. Blown away. That's ridiculous. So, (laughs) six. I I don't even know how to process that. I, I really know. don't, uh, because at least it's taking attention off the Panthers giving away <laughs> Burns for what we did. Well, at least for a minute, anyway. They got a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got a second. Yeah, and it's not a quarterback. It's not. It's not. A, but they got a. At yeah. least they got a second. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, well, they got the 39th pick in the draft mm-hmm. for did. Brian Burns. It's, uh, in in relation to what the Bears got for Justin Fields. And a fifth for the next year. <laughs> yeah, right. They got two. They got two, two. <laughs> Holy the the second the second pick that they got for Brian Burns is it's more better. is more than the Bears got. That's where they're at. Yep. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm absolutely blown away by it. Brooke Pryor uh from ESPN is actually gonna be with us tomorrow to talk about other football matters. Uh now, the Steelers have now upgraded their quarterback spot. Uh, Mitch Trubisky went back to Buffalo, right, to uh, to sign a contract there to back up Josh Allen. Uh, they uh, Kenny Pickett was – I don't even know where Kenny Pickett was traded. Yeah, they just dumped him. Get out of here. Uh, we don't want you. Uh, and I don't know if Mason Rudolph's still hanging around or not. Uh, but this ratchets up some pressure on Mike Tomlin. Art Rooney II, right after the season, he met with us in the local media and said that he is getting frustrated with this lack of success. And there is an urgency around here. And I think to me, this is Mike Tomlin saying, I feel my own coaching mortality. Yes, he has discussions to have an extension this offseason. He doesn't quite have a lifetime contract in Pittsburgh, but they are still happy with him as a coach. But I think this is him saying, I'm tired of losing. I want to get these guys a Super Bowl. I want to get Cam Hayward a Super Bowl, Minka Fitzpatrick, TJ Watt. And so he went out and did something about it. Okay, I I have questions. I'll ask Brooke Pryor those questions tomorrow. Are either of these quarterbacks fulfilling that end? Right. I don't. I mean, the answer is maybe Russ, but you better have 
everything locked down around him. Yeah, and hope he doesn't bring drama or anything with him. Well, it's Russ. That's, <laughs> that's the last well, thing the locker room needs. He's going to bring it's drama. Stevenness. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's... Russ... I mean, bless his heart, man. Right? Um, he ha- Russ always thought of himself in a much grander way than other people thought of Russ. I don't want that to sound uh, disparaging because I'm not trying to be, but Russ has such belief in him uh, that I, I just, it's it's hard to even express how much more Russ believes in him than the other people around him believe in him. Uh, Not the other people around him, because I think if you're around him, you do. Uh, But from the outside. And I'll just bring this up. Elliot Avent, who knows Russell Wilson very well, NC State's baseball coach, because Wilson played baseball for a couple of years at NC State. And when State recruited him, when Chuck Amato recruited him, one of the selling points was you can also play baseball. A lot of places don't want their football players to play other sports, including NC State, When Tom O'Brien came to state, it was a problem for him. And baseball was ultimately the biggest wedge in between Russ and his head coach, O'Brien. Chuck Amato was the head coach when Russell was recruited. Tom O'Brien gets here and is like, no, you're not missing spring ball for baseball. But that was the arrangement. Anyway. Um, Elliot Avent told us on the radio a long time ago, after watching Russ, he goes, he's going to be better than Phillip Rivers. And Phillip Rivers was a legend, is a legend. And as a pro, for what he was asked to do, yeah, I mean, you can make the argument. I think in the grand scheme of things, Phillip Rivers was a better NFL passer than Russ, but man, they won like crazy with Wilson in Seattle. I hope uh, I hope it goes well in Pittsburgh. Tim Peeler, who is an NC State athletic historian, actually just an NC State historian, we will talk about the history, the magic that is NC State next. Going beyond the box scores, Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Bring on the madness. There's the heart of the pack's done it. NC State is the 2024 ACC Men's Basketball Champion. 84-76 the final here in Washington, D.C. And the pack is going to the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row. And they've done it the old-fashioned way. They have earned it. College basketball tournament action on 99.9 The Fan is powered by Wake Med, RoofWorks, and Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC in Sanford. What an intense weekend of college basketball tournament craziness, especially if you put some wagers on them, and we are just getting started. Hey, it's Victoria Vodnecker here for BetMGM, and this weekend was a perfect example of how the underdog can help you cash in big and in multiple ways, whether it's through same-game parlays, straight bets, live bets, or another route, BetMGM definitely gave you multiple ways to add a little extra spice to the court. But it's not over yet, even though the weekend is, and there's plenty of opportunities to use basketball, hockey, golf, and more. I mean, BetMGM had me betting on golf this weekend, which I have never done in my life, but I couldn't pass up the promotions they offered. Whatever your favorite sport is, the king of sportsbook has got you covered. See BetMGM.com for terms, 20 one plus only North Carolina only gambling problem call 877-718-5543 or visit more than a game.nc.gov you call that a precision stop when a rookie stunt driver just give me a shot meets the trainer who thought he'd seen it all come on focus they'll soon find out that behind the wheel of the Nissan Rogue with the power of VC turbo and the most fuel efficient gas powered engine in its class watch this the protege can become a master But this is no ordinary blockbuster. It's a Nissan sales event ad. 
Level up your drive with 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Shop the Nissan sales event. Visit your local Nissan store and NissanUSA.com today. Auto Pacific segmentation excluding hybrids and electric vehicles. 2024 EPA fuel economy estimates from 28 city, 34 highway to 30 city, 37 highway for 2024 Nissan Rogue. Actual mileage may vary. For well qualified buyers, 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on new 2023 Rogue and dealer stock example 60 months financing at 1748 per month per thousand financed. Actual down payment may vary. Subject to residency restrictions and in-mat credit approval. Not all buyers qualify. Dealer contribution may affect actual price set by dealer. Contact dealer for details. Ends 4 Hey, hey, what do you say? John Forsland here for my friends at Buffalo Brothers. What a great time for sports. The college hoops tournament in hockey is in the home stretch. I call games in Seattle and around the country. But when I'm back in the triangle, I head right to Buffalo Brothers. Make sure you visit Buffalo Brothers for all the big games. Always great specials like half-price appetizers Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 6. Dine in, carry out at all five triangle locations and online at buffbrothers.com. Aw, man, now I want wings. Hey, it's Adam from my man Gordon Miller. Miller Lending, Kildare Farm Road in Cary. With a reminder, you could pay closing costs when you buy a house or when you refinance a house, but that would be a sign that you should have paid cash for the house anyway. Because if you're paying closing costs, you are lighting thousands of dollars on fire. It's a benefit you'll never realize because let's just say $5,000 in closing costs, and it varies about $1,000 either way, depending on the size of your home loan. But if you want to refinance free of charge, let's say the rates come down and they will, they always do. They go up and they come down routinely. It's just like a stock, only less volatile. But if you want to refinance free of charge, you got to wait eight years. Otherwise, the closing cost money you just paid is wasted. You'll never get to eight. In fact, the national average is four. I've never got beyond three. MillerLending.com. Miller Lending on Kill Dare Farm Road and Cary. Great website, by the way, MillerLending.com. But Miller Lending is an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 250-2146. This is Adam Gold. Is a hot dog a sandwich, Mike? It's a pizza sandwich, then it's bread with toppings and stuff. When you fold it, yeah. <laughs> And it's a calzone. <laughs> and a calzone's a sandwich, too. Oh, goodness. They're all under the sandwich umbrella. So is, is, that, that, is that, that a yes is, or a no? Is a debate, that is a debate I will never embrace. Mr. Oh, my Gold. gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I'm Adam Gold. Victoria producing the program. Somebody asked me before, um, and I thought it was a... A very good question to the uh, to the point where I actually put out my top five. Uh, where would I rank NC State's ACC tournament win that they just uh, pulled off? Five wins in five days. Among craziest stories here, Triangle, North Carolina. And I put out my top five. I did not put it in my top five. uh, But you could make the argument that it is. Well, I don't know how to do that other than ask Tim Peeler, uh, who is an NC State historian. You can follow him on Twitter at PacTimPeeler. He is a multiple author on all books about North Carolina State. And I appreciate his time. Uh, for the for the ba- at least the basketball program that essentially invented the Cinderella story. How do you put this in perspective? You know, there's never been anything like it, so you can't put it into a historical perspective from the five wins in five days. Well, that has there happened are... before. I'm sorry. It has happened. Five wins in five days has happened before. UConn. I'm talking about from NC State. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, there, there are tournament championships that never seem like they could have happened. Um, in 1970, uh, when they beat unbeaten South Carolina in, in, to win the ACC championship in 1983, where they did not have to win the ACC tournament title, but it helped them get into the tournament, which they subsequently won. And then in 1987, when a team that was much more like this one than any other uh, won the ACC tournament and made it into the NCAA tournament. Uh, those, those four tournament championships, I think, are all very similar in what they've done out of NC State's 11 ACC championships. Um, the pre- other previous ones were, you know, much more dominating teams. Yeah. Um, these, the four that I just mentioned, were ones that um, 
people were surprised about. And uh, NC State, despite what some people say, uh, has benefited from surprise championships, unexpected championships, much more than they've been knocked out of championship opportunities uh, through the years. Tim Peeler is joining us here. So uh, some of the people might might not uh, rem- you know recognize the the reference here. Uh, they didn't get what Matt Frigid, right? From was it Vanderbilt? Right. That <laughs> that is that is one of the ones that's always mentioned. The um, the Chris Corciani play against Georgetown. And yeah. Subsequent loss there. Um, you know there, there are a lot. Uh, Julius Hodge against Connecticut. Uh, up in D.C. in the same arena where they just won. Right. Lots of opportunities to do some things that um, that did not pan out. But as as I constantly say, NC State has benefited from great fortune, especially on you know the weekend of St. Patrick's Day, uh, <laughs> than they have uh, been dealt any percent you know major losses that uh, people often remember the. Um, the disappointments, but not necessarily all of the, the great things that have happened uh, for NC State athletics. Tim Peeler is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show, NC State historian. Here's the thing about it. Um, you know, we remember Valvano running around the court looking for somebody to hug. Uh, we remember the, you know, it was called. It was, a, I mean, was it uh, uh, Willie Osley? I've, I've, I got his Wally name wrong. Wally Osley. That was cl- close. Uh, talking about the the, the glass slipper fits, right? Um, right? That team, you 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 can speak to this better than I can, but that team, you know, as it was put together, were it not for some injuries, was was an NCAA tournament team from the beginning anyway, right? I mean, it wasn't a, a sixty four team field, but it was still good enough as put together to be an NCAA tournament team. They just needed a late run to recognize that potential. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because they had some injuries during that year. They had some misfortunate things happen. Um, but into the you know the beginning of that year, um, they were ranked in the top 15. It was not a bad – it never was a bad team. It was just a bad team – or the team that had to work through some bad circumstances, which they eventually did after uh, Derek Wittenberg returned to the lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they won – not just the ACC tournament and the NCAA, they were able to uh, win it, all those games, all nine games in incredible fashion. Right. Seven of the, nine, of the nine games, they trailed by double figures in the second half <laughs> and came back to win them all. <laughs> hey, and just like in 83 in the tournament, uh, Virginia had trouble making a free throw. Um, so we talked to Michael O'Connell earlier. And right. athletes don't think about these things as they're happening because they can't. If you did, you'd never be able to function on the court. But Vir- Virginia had an 85% free throw shooter uh, on the uh, on the line with five seconds to play, roughly, and a three point lead in, a, in the front end of a one and one. If he makes the free throw, it's over, right? So he misses the yep. free throw. You get the rebound, and then O'Connell banks in a three that not only did it bank in, but it banked and kind of swirled in. I don't believe Wyndham Clark would have made that three for people who watched the Players' Championship over the weekend. Like 80% of that ball was below ground, and it still didn't stay in the hole. Uh, and he missed the uh, missed that on a playoff, I think, by one shot. Um, where does that shot? Where do, when you th- think about that shot, are there other shots – in state lore that, you know, are, you know, that go in that same category. That exact same shot was taken by Brad Doherty at the beginning or at the end of regulation uh, in the 1983 tournament down in Atlanta. It did the exact same thing, went around the rim three times, but popped out instead of went in. And state was able to go into overtime and beat Carolina, the defending national champion, when Derek Wittenberg came off the bench and scored 11 points in overtime, or however many he did. I can't remember exactly. But that was the opposite of that. But there have been times like that (laughs) that um, just crazy stuff has happened. And sometimes they they swirl around and go in. Sometimes they swirl around and go out. And the reason I knew State was going to have a good opportunity to win after Michael O'Donnell sent the 
the game into overtime was at that exact moment, I got a text from one of the ministers at church that said, holy sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the entire text <laughs> that he sent me. <laughs> what, so the, like, what, uh, what, like a church leader sent that to you? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I mean, uh, you know, you can you can atone. You got time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but you know, I don't think anybody from state was asking forgiveness after any of those things that happened over the weekend. <laughs> so what you're saying is that there is no such thing as NC State stuff. Oh, that's such a bad and awful and no good mean that it's not even worth talking about. Uh, but it, you know, it creates a lot of T-shirts and uh, well, and what what whatever. I just. I can give you for every time you you can tell me that something bad has happened at NC State. I can tell you about something good, such as going into the first ACC tournament in 1954 as the fourth seed with not much of a chance of winning, and then winning handily uh, throughout the course of that game. Same thing happened in 1955, 1959 when they were playing North Carolina in Reynolds Coliseum. There's so many times in 1965, um, so many times State was an underdog and came out on top so many more times when they were in, than when they were an overdog and something bad happened to them. Tim Peeler, NC State historian, joining us here on the Adam Gold Show at PAC Tim Peeler on Twitter. Now, just specific to this team, like I've been yeah. talking about this team all year, and you've covered, you've covered hoops uh, longer than I've been here. And what struck me about this team is that what we're seeing now is probably the team we should have seen over the course of the season, and we just were never able to get to it on a regular basis. I'm not saying that they should have been, you know, uh, 15 and five in the ACC, but the I know the season didn't end well, but they had a hard time finding consistent performances from more players than DJ Horn this year. Now that we're finally starting to see it, do we think that this team is like what we thought it was maybe two months ago? Yeah, and here's the point that I, I like to make. I made it to the people I talked to before the game on Saturday night. This is a an experienced team, right? They have a lot of older players, like most good college teams yes. now. They have gone to the portal. They've gotten older players. And sometimes it takes a while to, uh, to mesh, right? Yeah. So... You, you know I have written as much um, mostly complimentary things about Jim Valvano than anybody else on the planet right. through the years. But Jim Valvano was not a great regular season coach. He did not believe in having a superlative regular season if it meant he could have a superlative postseason. Right. And if you go back to the 1987 championship, um, that was a team that had lost six straight games at one point, lost its point guard midway through the season because he just left the team he was throwing people in. He was throwing different lineups. Even in the, NC, the ACC tournament, he threw a different lineup uh, out on the floor. And he always thought you should use the regular season to build towards the postseason. And I think that's what makes this team more analogous to uh, any other ACC championship team that NC State has put on the floor um, than any other. That season in particular was full of turmoil, full of personnel changes, full, full of him – putting different combinations together. And I think that's what Kevin Keats did really, really well throughout the tournament. He had five different game plans that he used through the course of the weekend uh, or the week and then yeah. into the weekend. He had different answers for everything. And let's face it, the, the, the championship game really wasn't close. Um, State led by double figures in the first 10 minutes or the first five minutes of the game. They lost the lead a couple of times, but uh, Carolina had no – lead at all in the final 19 minutes of the game yeah I was um I think my favorite part for, from a state perspective and I've been a, uh I've been accused of being a Carolina fan about this or it, it's just uh a, 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 sorry I've been accused by Carolina fans of being a state homer about this uh I try I've tried very hard to not be a homer for anybody uh at any point um my but I think my favorite thing about the way Car the state won was that they got up big early. They Carolina got up off the mat and actually led it the half by one. And right. the 
you know, the way these things generally work is that you had your chance and you let that chance go and the favorite is going to come out and they're going to do what they do in the second half, especially since UNC has been a second half team all year long. And NC State did it again. And they did it to Duke yeah. both times. Uh, NC State won the first five minutes of the first half and the second half against Duke. And they did it to North Carolina, too. And uh, to me, that was the most impressive thing about it. You know, that that was the thing when I, the, the five or six years that I covered Dean Smith in North Carolina uh, in the 90s was that they always did so well. They would jump out on you and maybe something would happen. But his philosophy was always, that last five minutes of the first half and the first five minutes of the second half would always determine where his teams would go in, especially the big games throughout. They would, right. they would let someone, you know, hit, he would often go into the 10 minute mark um, of the first half, you know, with not much of a lead or a, 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 a small deficit or something like that. But his team's philosophy was always to own that last five minutes of the first half. Then you get a lead, you take away a lead, take away somebody's momentum, and then you come back out and jump on them in the first five minutes of the second half. And I saw that so many times during that time. And, you know, obviously, Roy Williams did the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That was part of what he wanted to do. Obviously, that's what Hubert Davis wanted to do. Uh, But give NC State all the credit in the world, trailing at the half, they came out and um, took over the game. Um, even when Carolina wanted to run and take some of that momentum back, they didn't let them do it. Uh, and then forced North Carolina, which looked the more tired of the two teams, to miss 12 of the last 13 shots. Yeah, they did. Uh, in spite of the fact that uh, NC State played five games in five days, which I've always thought is a little bit overrated. These guys, these kids practice every day for however long. Uh, they they uh, can play. And adrenaline is powerful. I- I totally agree, and it wasn't so much – they were clearly tired at times. I happened to be sitting right beside the, right behind the bench a couple of rows back. Uh, for the, they were tired. You could see that. They were cramping up every now and then. Things like that happened. But the thing was, because of D.J. Burns and some other players on the team, they were always loose. They were always looking like they were having fun, looking like this meant everything in the world to them, um, whereas – you know, I saw a couple of times Hubert, was, Hubert Davis was on the other sideline. He was angry. I'm not so sure he was angry with officials or the circumstances of the game as much as he was angry with his own players. I No, I agree. There was a time in the game where he uh, yelled at Armando. It might have been the game before where he yelled at Armando, not, not to Armando Baycott, but to one of his assistants, what the blank is Armando doing? All right? So, um, look, DJ Burns... Uh, I owe him a huge apology. DJ Burns was great in this tournament. In every way you can be great. So I had been very critical of DJ uh, over the course of the year. Maybe I was right then, uh, but didn't doesn't mean that you can't resurrect your season. And I think uh, DJ Burns absolutely did that. Tim Peeler, NC State historian. At, do you have any any closing remarks, sir? I was just going to say that I told DJ Burns after the game that nobody could carry the weight of NC State's fan base and its supporters more than somebody who had tree trunks for legs like he did. (laughs) And he carried the weight of 13,523 days without an ACC championship better than anybody could have imagined. And the good thing is he's got such a great personality. He he has the ability to carry that. Um, And and he refused to go into the post-game locker room to uh, talk to the media until he had taken a picture with the NC State Pep fan. I love that. <laughs> oh man, I, I I look forward to a nice run in the uh, in this tournament too. Tim Peeler, NC State historian at Pack Tim Peeler on Twitter. My man, I'll talk to you soon. Anytime. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, Tim Peeler here on the Adam Gold Show. All right, I asked a trivia question early, and a lot of people got it right because it's not super hard, and I gave away the answer uh, a second ago. Um, NC State is the second Power 5 school to win five games in five days to win their conference tournament. The other was the University of Connecticut. 
I will tell you two similarities or one similarity and maybe a good sign uh, about State and UConn when we come back. And we'll also rewind. You'll hear from Michael O'Connell, who hit one of the iconic shots in NC State history. And I will tell you my top five uh, North Carolina slash triangle sporting events that were, the to me, the craziest. Next. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Hey, Joe. You come here often? Yeah, just waiting for my pills. Uh, high blood pressure and cholesterol. Oh, that'll cost you. I can afford it. I have NC Medicaid. They cover prescriptions? Yep. Doctor's visits, screenings, emergency care at low or no cost. Hmm. I tried to get it before, but I made too much. Try again. You could earn more and still get NC Medicaid. Just go to the website. I'm going to do that. NC Medicaid is for more people. See if you qualify at medicaid.nc.gov. Are you taking care of someone on Medicare? Navigating Medicare can be overwhelming. You're not alone. The NC Department of Insurance SHIP program can help you figure out what steps to take and when. SHIP counselors can answer your questions. Visit ncshiip.com or call toll-free at 855-408-1212. SHIP provides free, unbiased help in all 100 counties. Projects supported by grants from the Administration for Community Living. Contents do not necessarily represent official views of nor an endorsement by ACL, HHS, or the U.S. government. North Carolina, we are finally in it. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is officially live here in our great state. And right now, new customers get $250 in bonus bets guaranteed when you wager your first $5. That's right. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to sign up, and then you can bet on everything from the money line, who's going to win, total points, which team will cut the nets down, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Take the court with $250 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you make your first $5 wager. FanDuel.com, promo code AGS to get started. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. You must be 21 years of age and older and present in North Carolina. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Bonuses issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call eight. 777-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov This year, more than 600,000 people are eligible for coverage under the new Medicaid expansion program passed by the North Carolina State Legislature. This means that more people than ever before qualify for services. Brian Floyd is the Chief Operating Officer of ECU Health and discusses these issues on this month's Conversations on Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association. Rural communities are affected even more because people who don't have insurance will seek out care in the emergency department. We really want people to get Medicaid expansion, get to see a primary care doctor, and avoid the use of an emergency department that consumes those resources that might really be needed for true emergencies. You can listen to the rest of this discussion on Conversations on the State of Healthcare podcast with the North Carolina Healthcare Association wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Learn more about Medicaid expansion and other important healthcare issues at nchealthcare.org. That's nchealthcare.org. During this sports season, the Governor's Highway Safety Program would like to remind you to buckle your seatbelt when traveling to and from athletic events. Whether you are driving out of or across town, wearing a seatbelt is your best defense against injury or death in a crash. Start the season off right, prioritize your safety, and buckle up. Every seat, every time. Remember, click it or ticket. It's the law. This message is brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association and the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Need money for college? Well, if you're a North Carolinian from a household making $80,000 or less, the next NC scholarship could pay for more than half, if not all of your tuition and fees at any NC community college or public university. And it doesn't have to be repaid. We're talking at least $3,000 for community college or $5,000 for a public university and possibly more. Get all the details about the new Next NC Scholarship and see how simple it is to apply at nextncscholarship.org. This is Adam Gold. Dan on Twitter, who you got? Robert Plant or Elvis Presley? That is actually very difficult because I don't want to disrespect Elvis Presley. I think it's Elvis. 
it's very, very close. And that is an incredible quest. The Adam Gold Show. It's the Adam Gold Show. I'm Adam Gold. Victoria producing the program. We're going to rewind in a little bit. We talked to Chris Carowell, Duke assistant coach. We also talked to Michael O'Connell, who hit one of the best shots in the history of NC State basketball. Uh, we will talk uh, We'll talk to both of those in the rewind. Uh, two things I want to get to first, at least two. The first is um, the trivia question we asked at the very top of the show. So NC State, by winning five games in five days and claiming the ACC title. Oh, not if you like mimes. Not that one. <laughs> right, not that. Right? We did talk about For that. For anyone who missed For that. For people who did. They're creepy. Uh, I actually, I, I, I didn't allow the YouTube video to stay. Right. Okay. Uh, quick. <laughs> quick uh, so it's not just an inside joke. So... NC State, because they were doing what they were doing on Saturday night, um, caused, I'm not, it's really not their fault, but I'm blaming them, uh, caused me to screw up the Canes Corner podcast that I do live, and everything was normal except the audio was not there. So if you were, if you joined, you know, online, you go to YouTube.com uh, and search Canes Corner Podcast, and you wanted to hear me talk about a ridiculous, stupid, come-from-behind Hurricanes shootout win over the Maple Leafs. And Jake's first goal as a Uh, Kane. And, well, he had the shootout winner. Right. If you wanted to hear me talk about that, all you could do is see me talk about that. Right. Because the cord uh, was in a... Never mind. We don't have to get... There was just no audio. Right. Now, the regular podcast, just the normal podcast, which is timeless... So was the YouTube video. You can always find that, although this one I deleted because there was no audio. Um, the podcast was normal. But the YouTube, the, vid- the video of it was not. So anyway, uh, yes, I thought about miming yesterday's podcast. but right. But you're not creepy. Yeah. And you I, don't have the face paint, I, thankfully. I I'm out of, have no face paint. I also don't have that shirt. <laughs> yeah. The black and white striped shirt. I don't hats. have that. I don't have the hat. Bow ties right. if they have, yeah. Uh, bow tie That's I have. That's a whole thing. Oh, bow okay. tie I have. I mean, I wouldn't wear one but because uh, I have a short neck. If you have a short <laughs> neck, you shouldn't wear a bow tie. Oh. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, I didn't do a mime. Mimes are, mimes are weird. So there. That was uh, that was what we were talking about before. All right, so the trivia question I a- I asked at the top of the show was the other because this uh, state is the second team to ever do it. The other Power Five school to have won five games in five days to claim their men's basketball tournament, uh, and that was the University of Connecticut in 2011. Here's the similarities. There are two similarities. The first similarity is that. UConn was struggling at the end of the season. They didn't lose, what, four in a row like State did, but they lost four out of five and kind of limped into the Big East tournament. Not only did they lose four out of five, they lost seven out of their last 11 to limp into the Big East tournament, and they were the nine seed. They had a, They also had a small, undersized lead guard, if you will, named Kemba Walker. Now, I'm not suggesting that DJ Horn is on a par with Kemba Walker, who had a decade-long NBA career and was an all-star, right? I'm not suggesting that DJ Horn is in that category, but college basketball lends itself to really amazing runs by undersized or uh, maybe undervalued players, right? And I would put DJ Horn in that category. He is also a an incredible shot maker, similar to Kemba Walker. Now, what Connecticut did next is the amazing thing. Is that not only did UConn win five games in five days to win the Big East tournament, beating four-seated player four four-seated teams in a row not about four-seated teams 
four ranked teams in a row. Number 22, Georgetown. Number three, Pitt. Number 11, Syracuse. Number 14, Louisville. Just to get into the NCAA tournament. But they then won the NCAA tournament. So they won 11 in a row. Wow. A team that had lost seven of their last 11 wow. won 11 in a row. That's an achievement. Oh, yeah. Now, they also played in the worst NCAA championship game I have ever watched and there is no second place. UConn Butler set the game back a decade. No, more than half a century. It was a horrendous game. Was there good defense played? Yeah. But it was mostly two teams that could not have hit water if they fell out of a boat. It was brutal. And I had a great seat for it, which really made me mad because I had I was sitting in somebody's seat, yeah, like the s- second row, second row near center court. Mm, yeah, and I was sitting in between uh, two people who we have on this program a lot, Mike, yeah, who was sitting next to me to my right, and Jeff Goodman from Field of Sixty Eight who was sitting. To my left. I was in between them. I don't know whose seat I was sitting in, but (laughs) they didn't need it because they were not there. And I I mean, it was an incredible seat. It was the greatest seat I ever had for a terrible game. What a waste. And I've had good seats before. Uh, That was when I used to cover basketball. Anyway, (laughs) um, yeah, so uh, that's what Connecticut did. Now can NC State do the same thing? Tell me they can't. All right, now let me get to the other thing before we get to a rewind. So a buddy of mine, Chris, uh, asked me to rank or where does it rank in the uh, in the in the annals of North Carolina, you know, crazy games events. And I did this. I ranked my top five. But here's the thing. I had to have been there. For my top five, because I've already seen somebody say the David Ayers game where the Hurricanes beat the Maple Leafs a few years ago now, obviously, uh, with the e-bug as the goalie. I was not there. Did I watch it? Yes. Was it stupid? Yeah. Super. But I was not there, so I did not include that. So here are my top five things that I have seen in person which is also another reason I did not include this. Right. Uh, number five, Payne Stewart's U.S. Open win in 1999. The crazy part for me was, A, who was on the leaderboard chasing him? Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, right? There were others, too, but those two names. Also, Stewart probably should have won other majors recently, but kind of fell apart. So, all the pressure from these guys behind him. Par putt on 17, that was not easy to keep his lead. Par putt on 18 when he hit a bad drive and wedged out and then played his approach shot to about mm, 20 feet, 15 to 20 feet, and then made that putt for par to win. If he misses the putt, we're going to a playoff. And the ne- the playoff at the U.S. Open, I don't they don't do it anymore, was 18 holes the next day. So he had to make that putt to win. So to me, number five. Number four, Carolina Railhawks beat the L.A. Galaxy in a U.S. Open Cup tie. I don't even remember what round it was. It was like round four of the U.S. Open Cup when the uh, MLS teams start becoming part of the event. There's another. There's a longer story about the U.S. Open Cup now uh, that we're not going to get into right now. But the Railhawks playing uh, in a lower level than MLS. L.A. Galaxy was the uh, most popular, the highest profile team. Now, they didn't bring um, Landon Donovan or David Beckham. And Beckham was playing with MLS at the time. But their team came... And the Railhawks beat them 
actually beat them, I think, two years in a row or three years in a row. But this is the first one, and I was there. I have never heard anything like that. It was incredible. The drums are still beating in my head. Uh, Number three, the ACC, I guess it turned out to be a semifinal, but I'm not sure it was a semifinal. It was the last day of group play. Carolina and NC State playing in an ACC baseball tournament game in uh, in Durham at DBAP, uh, a game which started an hour late because the game before it went extra innings. And I had my then four-year-old son with me at the game, uh, and that game went 18 innings. Wow. Yes. Game started at 8, was supposed to start at 7. Then it went 18 innings. College baseball is already the longest game known to man. Yeah. And my wife texted me. I think we were in the 12th inning. And Aileen texted me. It was already after mid. It was right about midnight. She said, (laughs) where's my son? Are you alive? (laughs) And Jack who stayed awake for the entire game. Wow. He might have been five. Uh, Actually, maybe he was, uh, no, he was, uh, no, he was not yet five. Oh, wow. September of 08. This is May of 13. Look at him go. Four and a half years old, right? He's committed. He was having a blast. He was sitting on press row. (laughs) Had a big thing of popcorn. Oh, yeah, what's time? Right? He had a credential. (laughs) Oh. It was awesome. Big shot, yes. Game went 18 innings. We left. In the 14th inning to drive home because I had to avoid you divorce. To li- yes. Right. <laughs> so uh, we drove home. I got home and watched the uh, Tar Heels win it in the 18th. Nice. That's number three. Number two. And then the sun came up. My God. I think the game <laughs> ended at round two. Uh, number two. The Canes were on to the 2002 Stanley Cup Finals. You're talking about something that was unexpected. That was unexpected. Uh, Beating the Devils, unexpected. Beating the Canadiens and the MVP. The MVP that year was Jose Theodore, the goaltender. uh, And they just, I mean, we we could do an entire podcast. In fact, I've done an episode of the Canes Corner podcast, 25th anniversary podcast on that. Um, And then beating Toronto in the conference finals. That run to the Stanley Cup Finals, way more improbable than what happened in 2006. Um, And then East Carolina beating Miami in a game in which the Pirates football program was displaced because of Hurricane Floyd at uh, Carter-Finley Stadium. That was great. And the fans tore down the goalposts. (laughs) They tore down State's goalposts. It's not even their goalposts. It was amazing. So my, my caveat was I had to have been there. Right. And yes. that is my top five. That's good. So, but man, Michael O'Connell, what a shot. Yeah. All right. Let's do a quick rewind. All right. Have you come down from that Michael O'Connell as we rewind? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely say now we're starting to come down and starting to focus more on our, uh, you know, next thing at hand. But, it was definitely it was definitely an unbelievable accom- accomplishment with the guys and the team, you know, fighting through all the adversity, winning those five games in five days, and you know, obviously t- yesterday doing the watch party with all the fans was an unbelievable experience. So, but yeah, definitely now we're definitely coming back to earth and um, getting ready for our next game at hand. So you're a lacrosse guy uh, as well, and you could have you could have played lacrosse uh, in college as well, and you know you're, you're a Long Island kid, and that's a big sport uh, on Long Island, but. Um, when people say, man, you guys had to go through five games in five days, like isn't like going through everything you went through playing sports as a high schooler, I mean, isn't doesn't that kind of condition you for five games in five days? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. You know, growing up, especially with all the different sports, but even like in AAU basketball, you're you're probably playing three games a day for two or three days over the weekend and stuff like that. And then even in lacrosse, playing multiple games a day in the hot sun, so growing up, um, a lot of us were definitely just kind of getting used to that. But when you get to the college level, it's definitely definitely a little more uh, intense to say <laughs> and a little more challenging, especially when you're playing this top competition um, in the ACC. And that's Michael O'Connell. We're, uh, un- uh, uh, I- my story time went longer than I anticipated. It's great stories. Uh, oh, my God. It's hard gosh. to, like, wrap those up. <laughs> 
Uh, man, what a first of all, congratulations to State. I have so many. I am not an NC State fan. I'm not necessarily a fan of any of the local schools. I am a fan of people. Yeah. I, I've always rooted for the people that I like, and there are times I root against fans that piss me off. <laughs> right. Well, you're human. I'm not above. Yeah, you're, I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. I'm not above any of that. But. I know so many state fans who are good friends, and I'm not saying they've had nothing to celebrate, because that would be a lie. But this is the one that probably means more than any, because without NC State basketball, the ACC isn't what it's become. Congratulations after 37 years. Victoria, thank you very much. See everybody tomorrow. Rally to boom. Charlotte to Chapel Hill. Your Carolina is covered. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. You know what my kid did for the entirety of his spring break? He played golf every day, threw his bag over his shoulder and walked. Would you like to do that? Oh, wait, it hurts when you get up in the morning, walking a golf course up and down hills, all of that. It bothers you because you have joint pain. Ah, Adam Gold here from my friends at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. And we are going to give you lasting joint pain relief without surgery, without drugs, without downtime. In fact, QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Advanced treatments that harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue can be had at QC Kinetics. Pro athletes have been using this for years. Now you can too. You can walk, you can run, you can climb, you can play, you can move again pain-free. Call QC Kinetics for a free consultation. 919-454-73. 919-454-73. In Cary, in Clayton, in Raleigh, in Wake Forest. QC Kinetics. What? New scratch-offs are out? That means new chances to become a North Carolina Education Lottery Winners Club member. Yeah, in the Winners Club. I'll reinvent myself. I won't go by just plain Todd. I'll go by Toddrick. I'll get a gold jacket, play my saxophone again. I'll stop and smell the flowers. Call my mom more. Oh, wrap it up, Todd.